Okay. I'm just making sure everything's working, guys. If you're in the chat and you can hear me, let me know. Okay. I haven't used the StreamYard thing uh, in a while, guys. So um, it might be a few hangups, few hitches, this, that, and the other. But we'll get it right like we always do. Let me make sure. See, let me put up my. What screen is that? Okay, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move this screen to there. That way, I can be looking in front of me instead of on the side of me. If I need to put up another screen, I will. But anyway, guys. A lot of y'all know that we used to do the lead cast where basically we all just kind of jump on random people in the discord. We just um, shoot the shit, whatever. Uh, but I decided to make um, a more structured version of the lead cast. And that's where this channel came from, the League Live podcast, because what we're going to do is instead of just a bunch of guys jumping on, yeah, 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 and so many people you can't understand what's being said. I decided to do it like this. No music, no fuckery, um, no screenshots, no none of that. Just guys talking, period. Y'all just going to get the straight up, the straight dope, as they call it. Um, what we're going to do is it's probably going to be myself and three other people, sometimes maybe two others. Just depends on who has the guts to get on. And the way we're going to do it is very simple. One. Do not be afraid to disagree with me just because it's my channel or because it's my podcast. I don't like people who grovel and, and bow and all that crap. You don't have to do that. If you disagree with me, just say, say I disagree and here's why. And if you make a good point, you guys know how I am. If you make a good point, I'll concede the point. But if you just say, I disagree with you, fuck you, NBA, then that's not going to go anywhere. I mean, that's kind of dumb. Um. But don't don't be chickens. Like it's it's so many of my guys in the Discord. They got so much to say in the chat. I'm hoping that this new format brings out people so they stop talking in the chat and actually get on the line, you know. But if you're wondering, the link to get on is in the podcast uh link room in my Discord. You just go in there and you'll see it at the top. And you just go in there, you click on the podcast link, and then you'll see it there. And you just click the link. And it'll bring you into the broadcast area, and then I can bring you on the show. So, what's the topic tonight? This is really a test stream to see how this goes before we get into any really major, major topics. What we're going to be doing is talking about good and evil, or good versus evil, or whatever you guys want to call it, bad or good. It doesn't matter. But what we're going to be doing is is we're trying, we're going to try to figure out, is it worth it to be a good person? Is it worth it to be a bad person? We're going to try to discuss that. So I'm going to bring on two guys who had the bravery to jump on. And both of these guys are new to the Discord, which says a lot about the people in the Discord that the new guys decide to jump on. And all the niggas has been chilling in there for over a year didn't. So unmute yourself, Art. What's up? What's good, everybody? This is an ARC Entertainment. He's new. Uh, he just joined the Discord because he wanted to be a part of this. So <laughs> tell tell him a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get uh, Ray on. All right. So um, so I'm, I go by ARC. Um, I'm 18 uh, in college. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> that's it. I'm just, um, I have a part-time job. I work at Wireless Sales Pro. Uh, it's like mobile company um yeah so that's just me right now hey you uh, know right. what you got me at the word job yeah <laughs> most people yeah. my age don't have jobs they just sit and play video games exactly so as soon as you said job you cool with me 
All right, let's bring on let's bring on Ray so he can get his introduction on, and then we'll get into the topic of good versus evil. All right, what's going on, everybody? Uh, my name is Ray. I'm 25. Um, I'm I'm a janitor. I work overnight at an airport. Um, I have my own place, small studio, but you know it works. Um, I started my business as a janitor, so don't be ashamed of it. I was mopping yeah, I actually, floors and. And cleaning toilets and doing all of that. And then I went from that to own the business. So don't be ashamed of it at all. You got your own shit and you got a job. So that already puts you ahead of 95% of the people on YouTube. I appreciate it. Any man with a job get respect from me. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you walking behind a dog scooping up poop all day. As long as you get a paycheck for it, I can respect that. Yeah, money is uh, everything. So let me lay down the, the premise here. And uh, don't worry about the amount of people here. It'll rise or go down as we do this. People, when they realize that I'm streaming, they'll show up. Before I do that, though, guys, take a look at the, the latest material that I, I, I made this today. That shit badass, ain't it? That shit look fly. Yeah. I made this today. Matter of fact, about a couple hours ago, I made this shirt. So if you want one, y'all know where to find my email. But anyway, let me lay down the premise. <clears throat> We're here to discuss whether or not it's worth it to be a good person or a bad person. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to try to make it simple so that even dumbasses can figure it out. The way I want to do this is we want to lay down. Let's start with good. Since I know where I stand, let's start with the goody goodies. I need to hear from you guys some, some virtues and reasons to be a good person. And then I will kind of interject and go along with you. Whoever want to start, go for it. Well, let me see. That's a that's a tough one, honestly. Being a good person, you you can get respect, but you can get respect by being a, an asshole and a good person. Uh, you can have probably people. Because, you know, I think there's a balance between good and evil. You, you know, like you said, I think everybody has a portion of good. Everybody has a portion of bad. And I think if you're too good, if you're too nice, something about you is fake and you're not really showing who you really are because everybody has a bad day. Um, but what what if you're so committed to evil mm -hmm. that it makes you feel like you're doing the right thing? Think Think about it like this. Think about it like this. Let's use the jet. Let's use the Jedi and the Sith. Mm. The Sith believe that they are just a more extreme version of the Jedi. They believe that what they're doing is the right thing for the galaxy. But if you look at them through the eyes of Jedi, they're just plain old evil. But the thing is, they they all kind of do the same crap. Mm. The way I look well, at good and evil, the way at I the way I look at good and evil is like this. The only thing that you can get from good that you really can't get from evil is that you can get a lot of love. Because if you're evil, mm -hmm. nobody loves you, even if they say they do. They just saying it because they fear you and they respect you, but they don't actually love you. So you, you get fear and respect out of evil. From good, you can get some respect. You get zero fear, but you get a lot of love. That's the way I look at good and evil. I think with well, the whole I like, oh, um, I think with the whole good and evil thing, I think that the term, both the words good and evil, like aren't the right term because I feel that good and evil, even though I am kind of on the light side, I feel that good and evil is like very subjective. Instead of using the word good and evil, I think that people um, should start using the word the right and wrong because right, what's right isn't always good and what's wrong isn't always bad. So it's really more of a choice. So like you make the right choices, you might go on a certain path, right? And then the wrong choices, you know, you might go on a certain path, right? But that doesn't mean that this is bad or this is good. Like society labels what is good and what is well, bad. Well, what, what happens, what happens if you have a chaotic good person? If you don't, if you guys don't know what chaotic good is, chaotic good is a person that they want to do good so bad that they end up making bad things happen. 
Yeah, and you know that's 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 a good example. I don't know this is this is a bad example to to go on with, but you could take Batman and the Joker for instance, because Batman doesn't. I don't know this is just go with me, because Batman does not kill, and the Joker constantly keeps getting out and killing more people. So it kind of makes all the people that Batman has saved irrelevant because Batman's doing just as much bad, if not worse, by not killing his own enemies. So it's kind of like And you know what? You know killing killing the Joker would actually mm. be an act of great good. Mm -hmm. Because you would be ridding the world of a of a individual who is completely incorrigible. He will never change. So you, you yeah. could honestly say so to add to that, you could honestly say that Batman's probably more of a villain than the Joker ever probably was by just not killing him. You know, I know that's a bad example, but you know, it, it it's a pretty, perfect. it's a pretty good example actually. Yeah. I don't think it's bad at all. This is my thing. Let Let's just bring it to this level. Um, let's talk about us for a minute. The lead. Every time that I'm live, we always have somebody who comes in the chat or the Discord. Hey, whoever's listening to the stream, you got to mute it because it's echoing. I think it's you, Art. Yeah, you can't you can't be listening to it while you're on it. It'll echo. But, yeah, that's better, a lot better. I can hear it now. Um, we always have those people who come in, and they act shocked. They act surprised that I could truly give a shit about people's feelings and whiny crybaby stuff. I guess my, I got a question. My question is, why are people so surprised that a total fucking stranger don't care about them? I think why, it's does because, that, like, why does that shock people? It's because probably they've been raised by single mothers. <laughs> Just saying. Because, <laughs> like, you know how the idea that, you know, when you're raised by, like, especially your mother, like, it's not a bad thing, right? But it's, it's like, you know, kind of like they want you to be like a nice person, a respectful person. They give you a lot of love, right? So then you go, you you meet other people and you expect everyone to be nice to you or give you some sort of compassion and love, right? So it's just more like maybe like parents give the idea of you have to um, be this good person and showing love to other people, blah, blah, blah. Well, why, why do they get upset when I choose to self-identify as a villain? Like I have, I have people who come in my chat and they, they are they're visibly upset because I re I refuse to call myself a good guy. Like I had one guy in my chat say, "I don't think you're evil. I think you're an antihero." I said, "No, I am not an antihero. I am not anything like that. I truly am the villain." And this guy just couldn't bring himself to accept it, so he had to keep trying to basically re-identify my own self-identity. Well, you know, hey, Ark, Ark, well, I think it's partly hold, on, hold on a minute, right? Hold on a minute, right? Ark, hey, you ain't got to mute yourself. Just mute the YouTube feed because you're listening to YouTube while we're doing it. You ain't got to mute yourself. You got to turn the YouTube in, in the background off because you're trying to listen to it and be on the show at the same time. You can't do that. Go ahead, right? <laughs> oh, well, I think part of that is because you have a lot of YouTubers that and I was just, you have a lot of YouTubers that try to make their relationship with the YouTuber and them and their subscribers personal. And it's not like you always say, it's just content. Um, and I think that a lot of YouTubers forget, like, we don't know each other off, off of YouTube. And I think that they watch YouTube so much that they generally think that they have a relationship with this person. We are just watching them make videos. And the other part to that is, I think because they truly want to believe that they're a good person, they want to believe that you're a good person, and that if you can be good, that it can kind of, I guess, maybe make them a good person. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand what you mean. I, I, I'll i be honest with you. I don't see anything wrong. That's just like when a person, when a person declares that they're a good person. Somebody says, mm -hmm. yes, I'm a great goody, 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 whatever. You don't see me run to them and say, no, you're not. You're an anti-hero. It's only when somebody decides to that they want to be bad. You listen, there are people in this world who are just fine with being bad. Okay? There are people in this world who are just fine with being criminals, with being villains, evil, 
whatever you want to call the word. Why is there so much emphasis put on good? Because I've noticed something. People who are good, look at how much bullshit they have to go through to be good. Look at all the mm -hmm. shit they have to put up with. You know, like if somebody say, well, you can make money by being a good person. You can also make money by being a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I mean, I, tell me where is I, the benefit? Where's the benefit? Let's, let's look at it like this. Let's say, for instance, there's an old lady that needs help crossing the street. Mm -hmm. And at the same exact time, an armored truck got, drives, by, drives by and a bag of money falls out. And you got a mm -hmm. choice. Get the bag of money and, and leave or help the old lady cross the street. Who's benefiting in that situation? The guy helping the old lady or the guy who <laughs> grabs the bag? I think it's more of like, oh, I think it's more of like self-validation that when you help somebody, it's like, like people say, it like makes you feel better that you help somebody. But I don't like, but then again, I don't see the benefit, especially helping somebody you don't know. Um, like you don't know how you don't know if that person is actually bad or good too. So if you're gonna help somebody like on the street, right? Like you don't know, right? Like I can get if some if you want to help somebody like 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 your close friend, parents or something. But like trying to help an old lady, right? Like it should be a choice. Like if you do it, you shouldn't be praised as like a hero or something. No, I, well, you I, know, I, I, I'll go ahead, go ahead, Ray. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. Well, you know, I think. Like people like like what he said, they want to validate that they're a good person, but at what risk though? I've known, st I've we've all heard stories where you try to be the good Samaritan or do the good Samaritan act, and somebody you end up dying trying to save somebody else, or you well, end up getting, there. You're, you're, there have been a lot of occasions where some woman's getting attacked, mm -hmm. and ca Captain Save a Ho comes running, and then he end mm -hmm. up getting a bullet or a knife in his chest. Because mm -hmm. I had somebody or yesterday. You, uh, I had somebody yesterday message me and tell me that I was a horrible person because I wouldn't stop if some woman was screaming rape. And I'm a horrible person because I would just keep minding my own business. Well, the funny thing is, if you got into that situation and let's say like something happened like that, the whole story could change. Like if you were in involved in somebody else's fight or like somebody else getting harassed on the street, um, when the cops see that in the report, they could have a whole different view and that could change the whole story and that could turn against you helping somebody else. Mm -hmm. And well, there's another, that. there's something else I've seen too. Hold on. I'll let you go next, right? There's something else I've seen too. There's something else I've seen. And I've, I've witnessed this with my own eyes. Guy beating up his girlfriend. <laughs> another guy jumps in to try to stop the guy from beating up his girlfriend. The guy stops beating up his girlfriend to beat the other guy up. And then the girlfriend <laughs> joins her boyfriend to beat up the guy who came to save her. I've seen that happen. Hey, RP, you got to get your mic straight now, Holmes. Oh, is, what's hey. echoing? Yeah, you were making a bunch of noise, man. You good now. All right. Or or in some cases, you'll have a case where um, in like two instances where you're trying to save a girl from getting raped. And she doesn't know that in the heat of the moment or what have you. She could say, oh, you tried to rape, rape her too. Or in some cases where you've seen some cases where somebody slips and falls at a restaurant or what have you. They break their arm. You reach down to help them get up. And in the process of helping them get up, they break another bone or some shit. And so then, so it begs the question of if you jump in to help, should you really jump to help, you know? Because you could really be doing more harm than good. Or you could just get blamed for something. Well, listen, like I said, I'm here to try to get reasons from anybody to, to be a good person. Hey, uh, Cloud, you're live, dude. You need to fix whatever's going on in the background. And RP, uh, what's what's your deal? You going to talk or just sit here? Uh, I was just waiting for everyone to uh, right. finish uh, talking. But... No. Go for it. It's, you got the floor. All right, yeah, my take on it is just, you know, like, I, the way I see it is just, I try, like, just to mind my own business, but, like, if I have to deal with people, I, I usually just, you know, I just help people whenever I feel like, 
I can get a benefit out of it. If I don't feel like I can get a benefit out of helping people, I usually just don't stay out of it because I feel like getting, going out of your way to help somebody, usually people, they don't really even like respect you. Like, they don't like give you props. At, at best, they'll, you know, say thank you. And then that's, that's it. But I honestly, I don't feel like there's much merit in being like, such a big goody goody two shoes. Yes. But I don't, like, I don't go out of my way to be a dick. You know, like, I don't just be like, ah, oh, fuck you, motherfucker, just for no reason. I'm just like, you know, I just want my own business. So well, listen, listen, I, I want to get that straight, too. See, me personally, I get all the time, I get accused of going out of my way to be a dick. And that's not really the truth. If you guys watch my live streams, I don't start being a dick until people start up with me or till the people start saying dumb shit or they start telling lies and then I kick in. But usually when I'm streaming, I try my best to just do the stream. Now, if I see something in the chat or I see somebody saying or doing some dumb shit, then I'm going to get in. I'm going to go in on them. You guys know that about me. But I'm just not, I'm not going out of my way to be a dick. That's the difference. But at the same time, I am I have never went out of my way to be nice. Like if there's a chance, if there's a chance I can be nice, I don't take it. It's, that's where I'm at. Like if there's an honest chance where I could be a nice person to somebody, I don't, I just don't take that fucking chance. Fuck them. I truly feel like that. And I and I want to know what's wrong with having that feeling. What's wrong with saying, go fuck yourself? Hey, I mean, that's why they say that the girls are attracted to the bad boys. <laughs> Not I don't even do it to get girls. I got a woman. I'm saying in general. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, to add to add to that, I mean, and not, I'm not saying that you do this NBA or not, but I think with some people, some people generally come off. Not that you do, but some people generally come off. They give off that persona or that aura of being mean. When I when they're not really trying to be mean, they're just being them. And I think with some people, well, even with me, it took me a while to learn that. Because I think when I first subbed to you, you had said a video about, you was talking about niggas and black people. And I had emailed you because I didn't know you. But I was like, I emailed you to say, hey, not all black people are like that. And you said, no, I wasn't talking about all people. So, you know, and it's, it's, it's hard to be that kind of person because you have to generalize everything. You have to rationalize everything. Well, the thing and is, to add I, to I, it, I made it clear. There's a difference between niggas and black people. I go out of my I go out of my way to call niggas niggas and call black people black people. Like a lot of folks who call me a coon or Uncle Ruckus, they never stop to pay attention to that small detail. I go out of my way to call niggas niggas, and I go out of my way to call black people black people because there is a huge difference, and we all know the difference. St. Cloud, yeah, what you doing, nigga? Nothing much. Did everything sound right? Yeah, dude. Up. You sound. Who is that with all the noise in their background? Hey, listen, if you're not talking or you got a lot of noise, mute yourself. Yeah, and I think it takes a lot of people. It, it takes some people, or it just took. It, it. I think it takes people to listen to more than one stream from more than one video of yours to know where you're coming from. Because if you just listen to one stream of one video, you wouldn't really know, you know? But, you know, like, to add to what one guy said about females, that's true, though. Like, you know, when you're a good, like, when you're a good guy, like, honestly, uh, your friends take advantage of that, your family take advantage of that, the women you try to talk to take advantage of that. And when you're a jerk or kind of an asshole, it, it, it shows that you're not one to be fucked with, and it gives people... Oh, maybe I should respect him more. And I've actually well, I've tested that little ex I, I've tested I, that but as here, a little here's experiment. Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hold up, hold up. Here's the thing. I'm not the way that I am because I even do it for respect. Respect is an after effect. It's like icing on the cake. I don't I don't act this way because I want respect from strangers. I act this way because it's my personality. I am one of those people who truly wants to see the world burn. I truly could care less. 
if I'm walking down the street and a lady and a baby carriage get hit by a bus, I'm not going to stop. Ooh, ah, what happened? I'm going to keep walking and minding my fucking business. I truly could care less. And I, I just believe in the ultimate form of minding your own fucking business. Look how much shit going on on this website right now. Look at all these people on this website pretending to be goody goodies. And what are they all doing? They're all running around reporting on other people. You know, you got all these these channels like fucking Scarce and Keemstar, all these uh, news channels pretending to be pretending to do the right or the good thing by reporting on another YouTube. You're they're they're not good people. You're just pretending to be good people online. The truth of the matter is, if you really want to be a, just a regular fucking person, don't try to be good or bad. Just mind your own fucking business. Now, there are a lot of people in the chat said, I'm just going to be neutral. Fine, but I think being neutral is a pussy way out. Well, I, I, think, think, I think being neutral is a pussy way out because you're not choosing. You're refusing to choose. I'm choosing bad. Some people choosing good. If you're choosing to sit on the fence, you're just a fucking punk. Well, I think with the whole thing, uh, I didn't want to bring this back because I know we talk. I know you guys have talked about it, like in a lot of the streams. Like you know, the people who defend Kevin Samuels, right? Is like when Kevin Samuels has a problem, why are you coming in to defend him, and why are you trying to act like a so-called good person or frame Kevin Samuels as a good person, right? And it's just like people. I think people want to mind like get into other people's like problems just so they can, you know, get popular. Like you know, obviously the whole clout thing too, and. It's like also self-validation, right? If they're going after, if they're helping a popular person, like, you know, back when I was in high school, right? When you, when you support the popular guy, right? You get more clout, then you get more influence from their circle of friends or groups. Well, I'm going to tell you, if internet, if internet clout is all you get from sucking another nigga off online, then I don't want it. That's what I teach you guys every day. Don't come on the internet sucking off dudes you don't know. Because all you're going to get for it is a couple of views. Is it really worth your pride and dignity and a couple of extra views on your channel to suck a dick off? All these dudes sucking off Kevin Samuels, yeah, they're getting some views. But what else are they getting? Kevin Samuels getting all the money. He getting all the clout, all the recognition. He's flying all over the country. New York, Rodeo Drive, L.A. He's the one enjoying this show, itself. These niggas, what they doing? Jacking off in front of their lap, they webcam. Cloud, what was you good? what was you trying to say? Is this volume good now? Yeah, you good now. You're not echoing no more. Okay, cool. And, you know, uh, I was gonna say to that, hang, uh, hang on, Ray. Let Cloud talk. He ain't had nothing to say yet. Basically, right. on the comment to being good or not, a lot of people will actually be able to tell if you're trying too hard to be that outgoing guy that you know you don't want to fuck with me because if they see that they're just going to fuck with you more you know it, you, you got to have that balance between you know don't fuck with me but at the same time you have to not react to people's provocations well that's like I told you guys uh, uh, yesterday I, my new policy is simple I ain't mad at you I'm through with you see I feel like this in order to get mad at somebody, you have to give a shit first. I can't get past the give a shit part. That's why I don't get mad at these dudes on here. Because that if you get mad, at, like, let's say you're mad at me right now. Then you can't turn around and say you don't care about me. Because if, if you're mad, then some kind of emotion inside of you makes you care. That The only way you can get angry is if you care. These dudes on here who have a problem with me calling myself a villain this is the perfect question if i'm calling me mba a villain not you not ray not cloud not art just me and i'm saying that i established the league of darkness because i don't want the league of sunflowers if that's what i put forward Tell me why some nigga on the internet get to come to me and say, you're not a bad person. I don't think that you're a bad person or evil person. I, I love your content, and that makes you a good guy. Someone explain to me why that dude is not a faggot. They don't and have jobs or hobbies. <laughs> and, you know, and a, a lot of it, I think a lot of it is actually people that look at YouTube channels that are just too positive. And I think you know, if you don't have that other opposing force, then you're not really getting 
you know, you're not really getting the full effect, you know, like if you're just hearing all positive, all sunshine and because the world isn't like that anyways, you know, um, you just look at the state of the world now, everybody that thinks that, uh, that, uh, setting that cop up, Derek, Ch- uh, whatever his name is, um, throwing him in jail was the right thing to do. And we're all good people. You know, those aren't good people. They're, you just destroyed a man's life for no reason. They all pat they you self on the back. Good? Yeah. You basically can't and, go you know, and walking through life with rose tinted glasses on. But you can go through life with blood tinted ones. Look, let, let's just do it like this. Here's the ledger. Here's the ledger. And we have to take this to the superhero stuff. Here I am, the big bad. Flying around, knocking down buildings, killing people. Here you come, the hero. Stop. What are you doing? This is bad. Why are you hurting these people? And while you busy catching all these people that I drop out of the sky, I'm punching you in the back of the head, stomping you, knocking down some more buildings, (laughs) taking some money, raping some people, doing all this shit while you busy trying to catch all these motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. That's just why evil is better. Just look I was. at uh in- oh, go ahead. Uh, just look at uh Infinity War. When they went and fought Thanos on Titan, Thanos yep. explained this is what happened to my planet, and I don't want this to happen to the rest of the universe because of overpopulation. Now, you can make the argument he had the infinity gauntlet and he could have easily just supplied resources for the entire universe. But he truly believed that what he do that what what he was doing was right. And he had evidence to prove that, hey, look what happened to my own planet. You know, when he showed Doctor Strange, you know, what happened to his planet. And he, he, also, thought, you know, he also had proof of what happened to Gamora's planet. Her planet revived yeah. after he killed half the people. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I, I was, in game, that's a different story. Uh, you know, I was looking at uh, when you were talking earlier and I was fixing my stuff. The uh, comparison I was going to use is injustice. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good. Yeah, that's a great one. Like, well, what would you rather? Would you rather have your safety over your freedom? You know, that's the question. Well, the thing is, even though like you know you have like movies like the Joker and like um, you got certain superhero movies from, especially the DC universe, taking a more negative approach, like darker ap- approach. I mean, like at the end of the day, right? Like you you have like the whole like the, the like for example, Endgame, right? You know, like you know. At the end of the day, um, the Avengers still win. So, what the Im- implication that the that like Hollywood tries to portray is that good is still going to win, no matter how much catastrophe there is in society. Yeah, but here's the thing: if you if you look at what DC is doing, who is that? Is that you, Cloud? Yeah, it's me typing. Sorry. You might want to mute yourself while you're doing stuff, man. Okay, that's not him. Hang on. Yeah, it's it's Ray. I muted him temporarily. All right, you unmuted. What was that, nigga? I think that was my fan going off. Yeah, I got that industrial strength vibrator going in there. (laughs) Anyways, what I what I was saying is this. Let's look at it like this. DC, for instance. DC is taking a, a much darker turn. When they put out the, the, the Zack Snyder cut, the whole reason for that was to show at the end an evil Superman. That was the whole point of that shit. That's all they want, because it was basically the same movie, except with the really fucked up ending. And it's because villains are popular. They didn't make a Joker movie because Batman is just so awesome all the time. They made a Joker movie because bad guys are gaining more and more popularity. You guys, do you guys realize that Killmonger was more popular than the Black Panther in that fucking movie? He was more popular. More people liked his character. Do you realize that Thanos was more popular than the Avengers? In Infinity War, everybody who left the theater was on Thanos' side. Mm -hmm. Every single person that walked out of there left out of there agreeing with Thanos. Every one of them. And I was one of those people. Because the goody-goody thing 
It's just the it's the road to pussy them. I'm sorry, but it is. I I tried the goody thing. Let's let's get it straight. I have actually tried it. I've I've helped old ladies. I've helped people move furniture. I pull over and give a homeless person some money. I've done all of that. And you know what they always say? When you do nice stuff and this, this, and this, you get good karma, blah, blah, blah. And it, I never nope. got a single good goddamn thing from being nice. Not a thing. As, as soon as I started being a complete dick bag to everybody, my life got exponentially better. More money, more resources more time, more everything. Everything increased. So to this and day, no one has been able to convince me why I should be a goody-goody. No one's been able to convince me because everything that you supposedly get for being a good person, I got it and I'm not a good person. I actually got more than some good people. Well, I think imagine, the- imagine if you're a Christian and you say, the Lord blesses his people, <laughs> but then you got a fucking atheist with more than you. What, what what is that blessing that you got then? The fuck is that blessing? Pastor getting the, all the blessings. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the high end with, crazies in the Christian community will just be like, oh, the quality of life is your blessing and all that other crazy shit. My quality of life sucked. When I went to church and believed in God and all that stuff, mostly because my mom forced me, life was horrible. When I let go of that bronze age bullshit and started thinking for myself, my life got better. Well, the thing is, if you're a nice person or a good person, like it's easier for people to take advantage of you, especially when, like, let's say if you try to help somebody, right? They could ask, keep asking you again and again and again, and they could, um, like, lynch on you, like, basically for a long time, right? I had a friend do that to me, and I had to let let him go, right? So it's like your friends, family members, and other people will look at you as weak, and they can take advantage of, you know, your, like, basically your belongings if you're if you if you're just too nice and you portray yourself as a good person. And, you know, when you're a good person, I think you, I think the hardest part about it is having to hold your tongue on a lot of issues and not really wanting to say what you really want to say. Oh boy, you just hit, you, woo! Because people just don't, people just do not want to hear the truth, no matter how hard it is. You just fucking nailed it. I think the other cheek bullshit. I think what you just said is one of the greatest reasons to be a bad guy. Because yeah. I don't have to bite my tongue. I don't have to uh, bleep my words. I don't have to spare your feelings. You guys watch my streams. How many times you see me spare people's feelings? I don't give a <laughs> fuck. You can run. You can run and cry to your mama. I don't care. When when listen when you have good people who do live streams, I watch a lot of streams. You have good people who stream, and somebody's talking shit in the chat. Oh, it's fine, buddy. You got a right to say whatever you like. Yeah, you got a right to say whatever you like, but I got a right to retaliate. That's where the evil person kicks in. The goody goody will sit there and take that bullshit. Not me. Mm-mm. But is it like possible to be a good person and be honest? Because no. I think that what like because no. like isn't nice being nice kind of different? Like being a nice no. guy. It's, in order to be a truly good person, you have to lie to people and spare their feelings. A part part of being a good person is caring about people's feelings and the truth will hurt people's feelings. So therefore you have to lie to people. Even if it's little white lies, you still have to do it because you have to keep the persona of a good person. Uh, A bad person don't have to spare your feelings. They're going to hit you with the cold, hard truth. And you're going to either like that person or hate that person, but you're still going to get the truth. And with good, with, yeah, with goody goodies, you're you're gonna either like them or hate them, but then you're gonna get lied to on top of it. Good people tell a lot of lies to spare people. Bad people don't have to waste time doing it. Like people like to convince themselves that bad guys and villains and criminals are all liars. I've met more honest criminals than I have honest priests. So, you know, it, I, I mean, you have to be a fucking liar to be a nice person to be a good person. You have to. And I, I mean, a really good way to check if you're a good person is think about if you were a doctor and you found out that the person you were going to talk to only had half a day to live. Would you tell them and ruin that half a day they have or just 
let them go about their business and let it hit them like a ton of bricks. That's a real I, thing. I would right, tell too. them so. I would tell them so that way the family couldn't sue us when they died the next day. <laughs> well, take that out of the equation, just for yeah. morality's sake. This is the just way I look at it, okay? And I, this is one of the best analogies I use for this when I say that good people fucking lie, and they do it just for the sake of feelings. Let's say you got a kid that's doing poorly in your class. You're a teacher. You 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 call in the parents for a parent teacher conference. And you tell the parents, oh, yeah, little Timmy's doing great. He just needs to fix a couple of things. You know what happens when you do that? It reinforces the bad stuff that the kid is doing. It reinforces the things that the kid is getting wrong. Yep. Because you start off by saying he's doing just fine, but he just needs to tweak a couple of things. All the parents hear is he's doing just fine. All the kid hears is he's doing just fine. Now. Take it from the other approach. You walk in, everybody sit down. You're failing in math. You're failing in science. You're almost <laughs> failing in reading. Your grades are terrible, and you're going to repeat this grade if you don't concentrate and pay attention in class. Mom, dad, make sure your kid does his homework. Check it after he's done. Don't let him just tell you he did it. Which one of those teachers is going to be more effective? The nice guy liar or the guy that just laid it down the way it should be laid down. And you know, that's to probably add why to education that, system so bad. Hey, like there's a reason, know, there is a reason why education is, is, is doing very poorly in America right now. Mm -hmm. and Go ahead and say you what you're gonna say, Darth. I mean, let, hold on, I cut Darth off. Let him say what he was saying. I know people like that. I know. What happened? I think because I know people like that where they think they're doing good. I'm telling like, nah, bro, you gotta get your grades up. But they thought all my parents say I'm doing good. It's like, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. We have too many nice professors nowadays. And you know what's crazy? Hey, that... uh oh, uh oh, y'all know who <laughs> that is? Yes. Her evilness. Hmm. Wait. That's my woman. That's that's what that's she used to be a school teacher, so I already know she was gonna come with that. I think yeah, and that's not say that, they should start positive. Yeah, that's not my approach. My approach is I'm gonna kick your ass if you don't do your homework. I just take take away the Xbox. I think people that don't like, work. Listen, that don't work. <laughs> don't I took my kid's fucking PlayStation for like three weeks, and that dude got worse and worse. When I started beating his ass, the behavior got better and the grades got better. I'm all for ass whoopings. <laughs> Fuck all that little because team. They, take a time out. Give me your game controller. No, get them pants off. Bend over. <laughs> I bet you. I bet you that 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 C plus is gonna turn into a B minus after this ass whooping. <laughs> Well, and take away the game system or, because they think, oh, well, if I keep doing bad, he, they'll stop blaming the games and blame something else. Well, I think it's just like kids. Like, no, I just increase how many days that's taken away if he keeps doing the same behavior. And, you know, to add to that, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but when it comes to religion, a lot of religious people are kind of evil when you really think about it because they say – a lot of things that evil people would or want to say, but they exactly. say it hiding behind religion. Like, oh, God's going to punish you for this or God's going to punish you for that. And, you know, and even the pastor kind of does it himself, too. Like if you if you cheat on your woman, God's going to punish you. If you if you don't offer tithes, you know, this is going to happen. So, you know, religious people do it. But they hide it behind religion, you know, or behind God, you know. Well, well Christians you, like to take so they, what's good yeah. from the Bible. They don't because like even I think NBA did a stream where he was like um, exposing, you know, the whole like text and the whole like aspects of the Bible. Right. What Christians like to mm. like to do, especially religious people, is they like to take the good stuff. So it makes them feel good. And then they, they try to pass it on to convert. Right. So it's mm. just they, they look at what's good. 
but then they hide everything that's bad too, right? So, you know, religious people really portray like, you know, this whole idea of, oh, we're going to go to heaven and hell. But dude, heaven and hell is just like a made up concept in my opinion. Those pastors mm. are very, very high on do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, because, you know, pastors, pastors are by no means good people. You know, they're the ones getting all the, you know, all the expensive shit, and, you know, living the good life off of other people's back. You know, and, and it's crazy because, you know, uh, churches don't really have to give back anything because, you know, it's a, it's a uh, what you call it? It's a. Uh, this guy, this pastor told me that I would get taller by praying to God. It's so fucking dumb, man. He was like, you have to do your prayers. I had to go cut my damn AC on. Can y'all hear me okay? Yeah, we hear you. I had to cut my yeah. AC on. I cut my fucking air off. It's burning up in here. Say your prayers and take your vitamins. Stop messing with the fucking air conditioner. I don't mind paying the bill. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> Who's the greatest dad in the universe? Took you too fucking long to answer, nigga. Who else is there? <laughs> There's Why are you no, backing up? There's no one. Why are you backing up? I'm, I'm scared. Why are you backing up after you said that? I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Damn. But yeah, you. Because there's no other day. So you're saying if there was another <laughs> choice, you would choose them? No, I'll choose you anyway. Because you're my dad. You sure about that? Yes. Because you don't seem too sure. What's up, man? What's up, biggin? Nothing. Well, you want to come and get your whatever it is on to? <clears throat> come on. This is my twin right here. Move. Oh. This is my twin, y'all. Hang on. He missing something. <laughs> NBA part two. <laughs> He's going to be taking the, uh, the chair and go. the... Uh, yeah, he's gonna be like the yeah, next be generation. A chair in a pretty soon. I thought uh, you and your brother Naruto. wanted to be podcasters. Yeah. Boy, right. quit, let him. You get your fucking chance. Well, it wasn't saying that. It don't mean take the damn thing off his head, asshole. You done? Yeah. All right, yeah. let's just get him his chance so he can get out of here. Gonna, gonna assassinate. Make it snappy. And take his throne. Give me that. Hey, it's little snacks. <laughs> Or no. Snacks. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm starting to think you might be right. Little snacks. Or NBA too. Huh? Snacks Jr. Yeah, okay. What up, little snacks? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, don't get mad at me. You the one who wanted to come in here. They're all laughing at you now. Snacks, what's up? You done gave yourself a name. You done messed up now. <laughs> That's gonna stick with you forever. Well, that that means snacky snacks. Big snacks, then. <laughs> big snacks. I'm gonna make you your own channel called Little Snacks. Well, they just said big snacks. Nah, you little snacks. That's his name, y'all. Little snacks. You done messed you up. Like a, yeah, like a gaming, gaming channel or something. Snacks, NBA. <laughs> Hurry up, boy! I gotta finish my podcast. <laughs> you just wanted to say Max hi. Max Entertainment. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Max All right, fork it over. Cause you just stand here watching. dancing. I'm the one doing major. Do a what? Soon. I don't know. Don't y'all got a video game to break or something? No. <sighs> Go do something. Do shut my door. Their way of saying buy me something. Anything that doesn't involve standing in here. I told you you wasn't gonna be in here all night. I'll let you come on again one of these millenniums. <laughs> you know us gods live forever. Relax, you'll get a chance. Welcome back, big snack. Whatever, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you replace that N with a T, nigga. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the future of podcasting around here. When I finally hang it up, y'all got two choices there. You got little snacks, and then you got big and that boy gonna be huge. He's gonna be bigger than me. Y'all gonna click on the camera one day. He's gonna be super like <laughs> suplex in my ass. Are you gonna change our name to League of Snacks now? Probably. Snacks. <laughs> Shit, as much as much as I get called fat, who knows? I might as well. I, listen, I, I never understood this. And we'll get back on the topic in a second. I never understood this. How the fuck do people call you fat? 
when, like, you know what fat is. And then they see somebody like me, six foot tall, 230 pounds. That's considered fat. So if we got that many skinny niggas running around where that's considered fat. Are people really that skinny now? Like, you got a bunch of these 90-pound dudes running around. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I know there's a bunch of these little young-ass dude niggas, 18, like, yeah, maybe maybe 100 pounds soaking wet. So anything mm. bigger than that looks fat to them. But that's not fat for my height, boys and girls. It's not. Now, if I was yeah, I think- five foot two, then you'd have something. They probably want to look look into your belly. They're so probably gay. So fucking gay. You know, I made a mistake. I uploaded a video today without my shirt on. <laughs> and I noticed the views just jumped instantly. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I finally gave them what they wanted. Did y'all see did the, the like- BBN? Did y'all see the BBN technology video? Uh-uh. No, not yet. <laughs> go to go to the on location channel and look at the BBN technology. Uh, I, I found a store where there's blindness. where there's where there's technology that they could actually afford. It's fucking hilarious. But um, I had to go out and cut the AC on the woman done, done snuck a brother. I'm sitting here like, why is it getting so hot in here all of a sudden? Got these hot ass lights. This motherfucker hot ass goddamn PC right here and all this heat generating. And I was like. Say she done fucking cut the air off again. <laughs> she said she didn't cut it off. Yes, she did, because it was set on six it was on sixty-eight when I came in here. It was on seventy-three when I went out there and checked it. I got central air, so I, I'm nice. The fuck you think I got me. niggas? A person blowing on me? <laughs> Probably. I got central air because I'm a cloud. Fuck you, nigga. I got central air too. The hood lifestyle. Oh, I just turned it up. Bang. Oh. It's mother getting hot outside. It's 80 something degrees outside. <laughs> she part and it's fucking now. humid because it's been I raining all day. Like right there off Do you need a blanket or a coat or something, sweetie? Don't let them fool you. I got my hoodie on. So why are you trying to burn me to death if you're wearing a hoodie? She's trying to help you lose weight. You know what, St. Cloud? <laughs> you keep it up with the jokes, asshole. Damn, let it so let like, me have a few minutes of air, babe. We fight over the air every damn night. Anyway, let's get back on topic. So I don't have to railroad some people up in here. <laughs> Still ain't been convinced yet. I've not heard an argument that would persuade me, judge, jury, and executioner NBA to join the side of the lily pads. Um, I still think the virtues of evil are best. I make more money, I get more trim. And I can treat people however I choose, and there ain't nothing they can do about it. Because I have I have an ultimatum, basically. If Even when I'm out in public, what you going to do? If we're going to throw down, let's throw down. But most people ain't going to do it. So yeah, what you going to do about it? What you going to do about me being an asshole? Nothing. Because if you ain't going to fight, then what's the point? Like, I don't, I don't do all that get up in each other's face. Come on, bro. Push me, bro. I don't do none of that shit. <laughs> You walk up in my face, I'm a DDT your ass right there on the concrete. So I don't give a shit. There's nothing that can actually stop me from being an asshole except a bullet. And that might not even stop me. Because even <laughs> on my way out the door, even if I'm dying, I'm still going to be an asshole all the way out. <laughs> I'm going to be evil till, till I can't be evil no more. I'm going to be in my fucking bed in the goddamn nursing home. <laughs> this is my last live stream. <laughs> I, I just want to say Man, it's the NBA you, of 89, and fuck all you niggas. Man, you have Alzheimer's, and you'd still be an asshole. Yeah. Yep. Even if I forget my own name, I'm still not going to forget how to tell people to go fuck themselves. Don't worry. We'll remind you your name is Big what, Six. What was, what, I had to take my pills today. What was my fucking name? Oh, fuck you, bitch. It doesn't matter. Fuck y'all. Oh, fuck you. That'll be me uh, in, in my old man bed. Sure will. Don't give a fuck. Somebody put mad grumpy atheist. Yep. Mad grumpy atheist. <laughs> Cause I'm listen, man. My woman is the ultimate side of good. Like, if what I am in evil, she is in good. Like every mm. evil thing that I do, she cancels it out with fucking good. Like, let's say I want to kick a puppy across the street. Well, if I kick him across the street, she'll run and dive under him and catch him like a touchdown. That's her. She she's so fucking opposite of me. I think that's why we're together, probably. I, yeah. 
I just had the image of your wife friggin' spiking the puppy after she catches it like a touchdown. That that would fucking be awesome. That I would, (laughs) I would be happy if I kicked the puppy and she caught him and spiked it. I would be like, (laughs) I'll be like this. I'll be like, finally, I've been trying all this time. She finally brought out the true evil. I'm so proud. I would be in tears. That would make me so happy, but she would never do it. She'd be in tears when she realizes what she did. She'd be like, no. <laughs> Look, this dude said yin yang. Yes, we are. We are polar opposites. <laughs> Look, she put y'all wrong. I ain't wrong. <laughs> See, we have a constant struggle. She's always trying to get me to be nicer and do goody goodies. And I'm always trying to get her to do evil. Always. And we, we have this back and forth all the fucking time. I think I'm going to win, though. She has a lot of willpower, though. That's why when I start buying the lantern rings, I'm getting her a green lantern ring because she has some super willpower. But it don't matter because I'm getting a yellow ring because your fear is made into light. That's me, baby. It's the Nestro core all the way. I'm about to get a St. Cloud. Uh, what are you? You're one of them purple fucking lanterns. What them fuckers called? No, I'm not. The, the indigo the fucks. Yeah, I'll I get you an indigo one, Isn't the white one like the most strongest? No, the white ones are the most powerful. Anything? Well, no, the ultraviolet yeah. ones are now. The ultraviolet are way more powerful. That's the newest one. I ain't gonna... Oh, shit. They got ultraviolet. Even, they have yeah, the they got... Old, the, it, it, it's called the invisible spectrum. They are fucking bad. They are yeah. badass, too. Sinestro, Sinestro is the leader of them. He stopped being a yellow lantern to be the leader of the ultraviolet corp. But that's a, that's for another day. I don't know. Um, you people in the you people in the chat, y'all don't know her. She has great willpower. Getting her to the dark side is hard. I, I mean, listen, I can't even like if we're driving down the street, I can't even get her to roll down the window and throw a piece of paper out. She won't litter. Nothing. Nothing. It's that hard. I'm and I've been <laughs> trying for years. We were driving her taking some boxes to throw them in the trash, and one of the boxes flew out of the truck. And because she was with me, I had to stop, turn around, and go get the fucking box. Because if I was by myself, that shit would still be in the street right now. I think she's the only person. I think she is the only person, except for my mom, she's the only person that can actually force me to do something nice. But I always make up for it by a a nice act of evil. So, like, if she makes me do something nice, somebody somewhere is going to pay for it. I make sure of it. <laughs> if I gotta do something nice, somebody ass is gonna pay. See, I don't do kind shit or nice shit because I'm you like like you were saying at the beginning of the stream, everybody has some good and evil in them. No, I'm compelled to do good by my woman or by my mom. Like if I go to my mom's house, she'll crack me upside my head if she tell me to do something and I don't do it. That's not me doing it on my own. That's me being compelled by a frying pan. See the difference? Mm-hmm. But you yeah, know, so it, it, but you no, know it's, it's true because you no, know, oh, go ahead. Whoever was talking, go ahead. I know I'm saying you know it's true. It's hard to be a nice person, like you said. It it uh, takes more energy to be good than to uh, do bad, and you, you know that's 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 very true. You know, like yes. sometimes you gotta force yourself to be nice to people, especially somebody you don't like. You know. Well, I, I understand why a lot of the dudes in the chat say that they're neutral. Because they don't have to waste time being good or bad. They just go along with their day. What we're talking about is instances where you have no choice but to deal with or interact with other people. Where there's no way out of it by saying, I'm just going to put my head down and just, you know. No, you have to. There's no choice. You have to You have to choose. Are you going to interact with them and be a good person? Or are you going to interact with them and be a horrible person? Yeah, well, you know, I think most people that are neutral don't have any responsibilities. I think if you have responsibilities, you have a family, a job, you know, shit like that, that you can't help but be bad and be good at some times because, you know, life, you know, life. I think people that say that they're good people and that they see nothing but kittens and rainbows and shit that they haven't really experienced a lot or because, you know, like because, you know, like life. Life is hard, and you know, and I think people that say that they, they haven't really experienced anything because it's really, really hard to be a good person. We, you, you know, actually, you I can, I can fake it. 
I can fake being a good person. That's what the Super oh, yeah. Saiyan Bob yeah. thing is. I can fake it all the time. The problem is I got too much fucking pride. Uh, the Super Saiyan Bob shit is hilarious. <laughs> I know. Frozen, <laughs> what's up? What's good, yo? Nah, nah. I'm uh, I just hopped on, you know, I'm going to hop on for a few minutes, you know, because I got to go to bed. I got to go to work early tomorrow and shit. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That, that's why, yeah. see, putting a podcast together is hard because every one of us got a job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody this bitch work. Oh, yeah. You got all these other channels, everybody live with their mama and shit. Niggas ain't got no responsibilities. Yeah, that's why they sit up on the internet all day trolling and shit. They oh. got nothing better to do. And no. see, don't let me, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. Trolls are a great example of what we're talking about. They just come <laughs> online, fuck with total, complete strangers, just a hundred percent of the time. How is that not considered just pure evil to just wake up and fuck with strangers for nothing? They're like they just see they see somebody come on or oh I know he's been working hard at work. Let me fuck with him today. Fuck him. Yeah. See, yeah. and, and you ever notice nobody gives the trolls any flack for being dick evil dickheads all day long. But as soon as I fire up a live stream and tell everybody to go fuck themselves, I'm the worst human that ever was born. Mm -hmm. But I don't do it all day. I do it for a couple of hours and then I'm gone. Them motherfuckers on here all day fucking with people. All day, every day, 24-7. Fucking, fucking with, with everybody. Fucking with kids, fucking with their house, fucking with their money, fucking with everything. Don't nobody say, you know, that troll is one evil bastard. No, what do they say? Oh, he's just being a troll, ignoring. But let me come on here and do some live on-camera trolling, which is what I do, and I need to die. I need to be burned at the fucking stake. Oh, my God. You're the worst They're thing since gay. fucking Satan, but, and by their standard at that point. You when come you got niggas camera. been hounding you for four years because they mad at you, and you don't even know what you did. <laughs> well, I think that's pretty gay. They probably they they want to be your girlfriend or some shit. But you gotta. You. But listen, calling people <laughs> gay is evil. Little snowflake feelings. What? If you, if you say somebody's mean? gay, you're evil because you know, just, apparently what? all the gays are on the side of good, right? Wow. Nah, fuck that. I seen some gay motherfuckers do real evil shit. Just because you too. don't agree with them. Guys, all of us are inherently evil. It's in our DNA. It can't be stopped. Okay? Because if it, if it wasn't in our DNA, we would never get angry about shit. We would just walk through life whistling at the clouds. <laughs> Nothing would bother us. Everything would be great. There would be no issues on, on planet Earth if it wasn't for the fact that evil is in our DNA. Some of us spend our whole day suppressing it. That's why therapists and motherfuckers like that exist, to help you suppress your human nature. I ain't going to no therapist. You have anger problems. <laughs> no, motherfucker. You have get the fuck out of my way problems. What the fuck is a therapist? A therapist, you know, a therapist. <laughs> a psychiatrist, nigga. You know them, them bitch-ass dudes that make shit up. The, the fuckers that give you a bunch of pills and make you sit in your chair like this with drool coming out your mouth all day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they like, don't actually fix you. They just fill you up with medicine to make you think you've been fixed. You know, even though there's yeah. nothing really wrong with you, they'd be like, well, you know, I, I think he's bipolar or this other bullshit. Exactly. And they fill you up every other pill imaginable yeah. just to fuck, with, fuck you up. Oh, my child is so bad. I don't know what to do. I can't stop him from knocking over bookshelves and tearing up his room. Sure you can. Reach in your closet, grab that leather strap thingy that's hanging from the, the thing in there. It's called a belt. And when you swing it, make sure when you swing it, it wraps around the ass a couple times before it pops them. And then pull it back like Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. I bet you they ass to stop in. Shit, it, uh, it worked on me. I know. You want to know what made me stop acting up when my mom got home from work and that belt came across my nutsack? Mama, please! <laughs> Oh God! You hit it! I don't care. <laughs> Hold my ass I, up. Jeez, I got my ass up. whooped with a wooden paddle. Yeah, that's what my mom used. Well, um, hey, yeah, they also did not check. But that's see, that's I saved all my like. evil for when I became an adult because my mom would not let me do evil when I was a kid. So I said, "All right, fine. I'll just store it all up, and when I reach a certain age and certain potential, the whole world's gonna pay." 
It's like I tell you all of y'all, y'all niggas better hope I never hit the power ball. If you look on <laughs> TV one day and NBA has won eight hundred million dollars, I'm gonna use every eight hundred fucking million dollars of it to make people's lives a living fucking hell. I'm gonna knock on a nigga door, get the fuck out. This is my house. I just bought it. Not to mention this whole fucking street. So get off my street or I'm gonna call the police. <laughs> All my stuff still in there. No, scratch that. That's my stuff. Get the fuck out. <laughs> and you know it's crazy because normal everyday people don't ever seem to win the lottery. Like it's you know I'm not a normal I everyday people. That. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, nigga, wake up one day. Why ain't my internet working? Oh, this guy named NBA just bought our cable <laughs> provider the other day. <laughs> That's why your internet ain't work because I own that shit. You are permanently <laughs> off the air. You might well go on and say, fuck it, it's over for you. Your whole block gonna be blacked out. That's a part of my initiative. The no niggas on the internet initiative. Y'all think I'm cool? Look, it, the Chicago City plan is not just one little singular plan. There are facets to the Chicago City plan. And, and guess what? That plan is born of pure evil. And I'm gonna tell you why it's born of pure evil. Because the people that the program is designed to stop are the worst form of evil. You can't fight those guys with goody goody shit. Tell me a thug in Chicago right now that you can stop with goody goody tactics. Tell me a gang member or a drug dealer up there right now that's doing all that shit that you can stop with goody tactics. If you go up there preaching positivity and fucking God and all that shit, they'll just shoot your ass before you even finish the first sentence. Yeah, I ain't trying to hear that shit. Exactly. So instead of trying to fight him with goody goodiness, I will let you back on, Ray. You had froze up for a minute. I'm trying to see what lazy here is. Well, what's up, man? I was um one of the dudes that emailed you to get in your Discord server. Yeah, I, I assumed think... that because you're in my Discord. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing much, man. Uh just wanted to talk for a little bit. Well, you got the floor, homie. Now, uh, uh, you know, going on your point about like the whole Chicago City thing and, you know, trying to talk thugs out of what they're doing. You know, I feel the same way, dude. It's like, if they can't change, then why try, you know? Like, why keep trying? Why keep saying random stuff just to try and get them to do better, you know? It's like, what's the point? It's going to one year out the other. Either that or they're just going to shoot you and kill you. That's it. I, I just I think mean, that we should fight fire. Like, a lot of a lot of goody-goodies don't believe in fighting fire with fire. Like, we was talking about earlier the whole Batman scenario. How yeah. many people have been killed, maimed, and hurt because Bruce Wayne won't just simply kill the Joker and get it over with? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I take the injustice Superman approach. Stick your arm through his chest and move on to the next one because he and ain't going to stop. Yeah. And Joker even said he won't stop. Yeah, when a person tell you literally I'm going to break out of jail and kill somebody else and all you do is hope that Commissioner Gordon can keep him behind bars... Fuck that. The yeah, Chicago man. City plan was born out of pure evil because I feel like this. People who do what they do should be subject to the most evil shit I can think of. And then after that, they should be killed. Hold on. Didn't they ever do a storyline in the in Batman where Batman dies and like the Joker didn't know what the fuck to do? So he just stayed there like he was comatose. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The Joker, he lost his purpose. That was the Dark Knight. Yeah. yeah, he lost his fucking purpose. He, he totally yeah. lives to torment Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he don't care about nothing else. And, In fact, and, he knows Batman is Bruce Wayne. Yeah, he knows he everything about shit. him. He doesn't say shit because he just yeah. wants to fuck with him. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because, like, the answers are right there, and yet they don't want to do it. And furthermore, the thing is, Batman was bent on vengeance. His whole thing about becoming Batman in the first place was because his parents got killed in an alleyway, and he was like, "Man, I'm gonna beat up a whole bunch of criminals because I." But think you know, he. But here's the thing: he never got. He never actually got vengeance. All he did exactly. was get, get justice sometimes. But actual mm-hmm. vengeance goes way further than what he was doing. See, what I'm talking oh. about is this. This is what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about good and evil, this is what I mean. Let's say, for instance, you got a criminal. Let's say he he rapes a girl, beats her up or something, goes to court, found guilty. The the goody-goody justice side is going to put him in a cell, 
We're going to spend tax dollars on him for 10 to 20 years. And then he's going to get out and he's probably going to do the shit again and go back. And then he'll probably end up dying in prison. Okay? That's the goody-goody side, the justice -y side. Here's the evil approach. You send him to a prison with a population of about, I don't know, 5,000 inmates. And let's say out of that 5,000, 1,000 of them are rapists. His prison sentence don't end until the 1,000th dude that screwed him in the ass. Then, once he's been fucked by every rapist in the prison, he's free to go. Do you think that rapists will exist anymore if you started a plan like that? No. You, do you nope, do you really think people would risk no. it? No. No. Exactly. The red pill, the red pill community not. claims to be good people trying to save society. Good, uh, listen, good, good people are ruining society. You know, I bet you all those altar boys, I bet you they thought they priest was a good person until they found themselves bent over looking at the cross. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> and it was funny is that, like, nobody's perfect. And you can't try to force yourself to be perfect. And the thing is, there are a lot of people that try way too fucking hard to do the best they can to be the best person they can be to everybody else. They're too selfless. They're too, like, involved in everybody else's stuff. And ev you end up getting hurt in the end. Well, Instead, listen, here's something, yeah. here's something that I think is hilarious. I think a lot of a lot of people, especially men, are starting to lean my way. And I'm going to tell you why. The other day when I was leaving, I was headed out of town for work. There was a chick on the side of the road in a fucking BMW trying to jack up her, her shit because her shit was flat. And she was good looking. Not a single dude pulled over to help. Not a single uh -huh. damn one. Because... Ain't hey, nobody finna pull over, get on the nasty ground, jack up your car, put a wheel on there, and don't even get a, a fucking phone number out of it. You might get a handshake if you're lucky. Ain't nobody gonna do that shit. Back, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe 10, 15 years ago, you'd have had 10 guys pull over because she was hot. Now even hot girls can't get motherfuckers pull over because people are starting to see it my way. Fuck everything. If I pull over, how much fucking money you got? Because, like, there are guys that auto repair shops, they get paid like $75 to do this right here. So if I'm going to stop, then I want $75 and I'll put your damn tire on. See what I'm saying? I think people more and more are like me and just a lot of people don't want to admit it. Especially on YouTube. Me and Geekdom have this conversation a lot. Geekdom, he plays the nice guy role on his channel to the letter. I love you guys. Thanks for coming out. Super Saiyan Bob, but when he can come on my channel, he sounds like a straight gangster. He be he be in the cussing people out in the chat. He be going in on people. I know y'all seen the difference. Yep. that's what I I'm talking thing, about. Yeah. Basically, we all, have, we, we all yeah. have it in us. I just choose mm -hmm. to use mine all the time instead of some of the time. Yeah, when he comes on your channel, the real geekdom comes out. Yeah, hell yeah, darn. Okay. Yeah, he ain't got to bite his tongue. He ain't got to be nice. He can just unload on people. Yeah, and, when and, you... and look at how relieved and happy he feels when he's doing it. Being an evil bastard honestly gives you this, this, this wave of euphoria. If you was a freaky bastard, it'd probably make you jizz on yourself. <laughs> or just afraid to get canceled. That's the main problem. They're afraid yeah. of this cancel culture shit. You That's guys been watching me for uh, how long? How many times have I been canceled and rose from the dead? You know what? I'm not even a yellow lantern anymore. I'm a black lantern because I can't die. I put Man, it like this. Wait, you know, like what's her name? The Mandalorian shit. What's her name? Um, yeah, I know. I know the, the, the big muscle yeah. bound chick. I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah the Gina, Gina Carano, Carano shit. Yeah. yeah, she said. I mean, I don't agree with everything she was saying, right? But she was trying to voice out, and you know, she got canceled by the left wing. Look, let, let's go ahead and, and talk about, about canceling real quick because I think this cancel shit is just another form of evil, but people mask it as doing something good. Yeah, exactly, bro. They masking it, but it's evil. You're trying to silence another person because you don't like them or because you disagree with them. That is a form of evil. We're just covering it up with this fake morality shit. Mm -hmm. It's horse shit. And it's stupid because like they end up 
getting fucked over by people who are actually smart enough and have the actual logic to be like, man, what you just did was really fucking stupid. You can't, you can't but just you sit know, here and pretend like, yeah. But you know, uh, when it comes to can- when it comes to the cancel stuff, the cancel culture, um. Uh, I can't remember what YouTube channel NBA was talking about it. He was talking about it on uh, Sunday, but um, there's a YouTube channel, uh, Lado or Crowder with uh, Stephen Crowder. That's a perfect example of people just wanting to hear the positive aspects of things. And yep. when you do that, you're not hearing the full story of everything, you know. And you it's know, and- you guys want to know something. There was a point in time on YouTube where I tried. I had some people whispering in my ear telling me, hey, man, try this. You know, try the nice YouTube approach. You guys remember that little spell I had where I wasn't cussing. I wasn't going in on people. I was just trying to do the content. That was the worst time I ever had on YouTube. (laughs) It wasn't fun. It was the worst time. And everybody around me, like niggas who watch me every day, were not watching because I was doing that Super Saiyan Bob horse shit. And they was like, you know what? I didn't sign up for this NBA. I don't know who this imposter is, but this ain't the dude I signed up for. Oh, and you know, what, you know what changed? When that Derek Chauvin trial ended and I came online and exploded? <laughs> that, that stream had, what, 450 people watching it live. And you know what they were all saying? He's back. <laughs> and that was a good Shit. stream, though. I ain't going to lie. So you, and you know what you know what happened after that? I realized something. I realized that I was my own worst enemy. I'm listening to career YouTubers, listening to people like Geekdom and people like that telling me, hey man, if you just clean up your act, you too can get 700,000 subscribers. I tried <laughs> cleaning up my act and it fucked my channel up. It <laughs> fucked all my channels up. So now uh, I ain't cleaning up shit. I look at it, I look at it like this. If that were true. Then how can people like the fucking canceling and all the mother motherfuckers could talk crazy like that on some low key racist shit and get mm-hmm. all themselves? You think Keemstar got that big from being nice? Hell nope. no. Hell Fuck no. Fuck being nice. Uh-huh. Keemstar is a prime example of what I mean. That man is an ultra douchebag. He done doxed people. He done swatted people. He's harassed people. He's gotten people terminated off YouTube. He's gotten people kicked off Twitter, off fucking Twitch. He's done some horrible shit. He had people raid a 60-year-old man and accuse him of being a pedophile live on the air. And he still to this day ain't apologized for it. Nope. So nope. I don't understand why people give me so much heat. Like I had somebody today. You know the video I did when I was laughing at the guy from punching himself? <laughs> somebody in the comments yeah, like, hey, hey, so hey, hey, the comments told me. That shit was funny. The comments like, told me. I, he said, I would expect nothing less from the person that said what they said about <laughs> Etika. And I said, oh, we back on the Etika shit again, huh? I said, well, fuck you and fuck Etika too. Fuck you want me to do. I ain't apologizing. Hey, I don't give problem. a fuck if 200,000 Etika fans come here right now and they could dislike this stream to hell and back. And I will, at the end of the stream, when I got my 200,000 dislikes, I'm going to tell them, fuck you and fuck Etika too. And then I'm going to say, see y'all tomorrow. I sure will. Hey. They'd be like, you don't understand his mental issues. I'm like, bro, he doesn't okay, have no mental bro. issues. Bro. bro, that's not mental issues. What are they exactly. talking about? Uh, what what you going to say, RP? Let, let RP get his city, uh, y'all. I was, I was going to say, uh, going back to like the one topic of humans being inherently evil, mm-hmm. I, I, I believe that. I believe we're inherently evil, violent creatures because you got to think about it. Like going to the, the dude hitting himself. Why, why is it, if we weren't inherently evil, why is it that I would say 90% of people, when some like slapstick, when someone gets hit in this, hits themselves or they get hit, we start laughing. We start screaming, laughing when someone gets hurt. That's well, just hilarious well, to us. Exactly. That's because we're all very morbid creatures. But here's oh. something that you, here's something else I want to, I want to tie to what you started with. Why is it that when we get upset, our very first reaction is to ball up our fist? And either hit ourselves <laughs> or hit a wall or hit somebody. Or I'll take it even further. Like, how why is it that if we weren't violent creatures, why do we watch? Why do we have a little sport where people beat the shit out of each other for entertainment? Yep. They literally beat mm-hmm. themselves, bloody themselves, 
get bloody, and we find that shit like this is the most entertaining shit in the world. Why do we slow? Why do we slow down? Bones and shit. Why do we slow down on the freeway for bloody car wrecks? Right. Like if you see a yep. car wreck and there's nobody hurt, you keep going. But if you do see a car wreck and you see a leg in the street and an arm over there, you slow down because you want to see it. It's because <laughs> we're all inherently evil, morbid bastards. I yeah. need to accept mine. It even goes into like storytelling. The one thing about storytelling is that there are different, you know, aspects of storytelling. The one thing they always tell you when it comes when you're making a story, you have to have this. Otherwise, it's not considered a story. You have to have conflict. If you don't have conflict, it's not considered a story. If we were so good and evil, why can't we have a story? Why can't we have any story without somebody getting hurt in the process? Somebody getting in distress? Because whether we like it or not, we are inherently evil people. The way I see it is the people who are good are weak people. Because you got to think about it. Would you, you wouldn't care about other people unless you were one of the people getting, you know, fucked over. If well, you're not getting fucked over, why would you care about anything? Check it, like, check this out. Here's something that, uh, that everybody knows for a fact is true. And we all kind of overlooked it. When you're being, when you, when you're born and you're a kid and you're being raised, you ever notice your parents don't have to teach you to be bad. They have to teach you to be good. And the reason that you have to be taught to be good is because being bad is in your nature already. That's why little mm -hmm. kids get into trouble and, and do shit, horrible shit when they're kids. Like stick a fork in a light socket or choke a puppy because it's already in our <laughs> or nature. Or kill the ants on the, uh, on the street. Because we animals. You have, you have to be taught by your parents to be a good person. I've Should never heard anybody right. say you have to teach your kids to be a bad person. It's Should already inside of us. I remember yeah, all the fucking times that I just did dumbass shit that my dad been telling me for years never to do and got my ass whooped for doing it. And then I when I got way. and then after the ass whooping, I go do the same dumb shit again like two days later and got my ass whooped again. Yeah, I was the same way. Like when I met my stepmom, dude, like I did so many bad things. <laughs> I didn't want to go into it, but like <laughs> I got whooped so many times and afterwards I would still do the same thing. And my mom would be like, why won't you learn? It's like, because I don't know. Because you have to be taught to be good. Being good is something that you have to be trained to do. It's like training for a job. Your parents mm -hmm. have to train you to be a good person. And here's the fucked up part. Your parents can raise you. To, in church, you can be the greatest person ever. You could go to school, get straight A's, and still turn into a mass murderer because being evil is in your nature. Because we all animals, time. we were originally monkeys, so by nature <laughs> we're all animals, and we have that animal instinct to fight. How many it's times right. you done seen a, a girl? She's in church, the pastor's daughter, this, this, and that, and then she the biggest hoe on the block. Everybody, and their mama, they hit it. What, what good at all that church? Oh my god, nothing. Oh, but you know, like I just stopped going for that very reason. Ain't that quite human nature, y'all. I'm a listen. I'm an atheist, but I'm also a humanist. And 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 I, I had a good conversation with a friend of mine the other day because he's one of these churchified dudes, the good Lord to make a way for you kind of dudes. Uh, <laughs> and I said, I said, look, I'm a humanist. I believe that we are responsible for everything that happens on this fucking planet. Everything because we're the ones down here doing the everyday shit. I didn't see Jesus or the devil or God holding hands, walking through the street, breaking shit or killing people <laughs> or, or doing shit. <laughs> we the ones on earth. And I, I it makes me so mad whenever some bad shit happens, you want to blame humanity. But as soon as some good shit happens, oh, it's a miracle. The good Lord blessed us. That nigga ain't blessed shit. <laughs> I'm tired. It's just bullshit. Human beings are responsible. We can't keep on blaming shit on God or the devil. Like this lady killed killed her five kids, strapped them all in a fucking car, ran across the goddamn car into a lake in Texas. Went to court. The devil made me do it. Instead of putting her in prison, they put her in a mental institution. She eventually got out of the mental institution and she's a free person. After murdering her five kids and blaming it on the devil. No, bitch, the devil ain't evil. Your ass was evil. I hate and the excuses, know, man. The excuses yeah. piss me off. 
I mean, I was just gonna say that. You know, I hate that thing with that is that the people that need to be locked up and need to actually be in mental institutions, they're not. Like they just get, they just go away yeah. scot free. Which is no, just, that's your homeless population. That's crazy. That, yeah. that that's the thing though. <laughs> yeah. Like we can't even really do anything about it because, especially in America, people have you know the right to freedom of religion. And they can always pull the religion card as long as we have freedom of religion. It's like, ah, I'm practicing my religion. If you indict me because of my religion, you are going against your own. But no, look at how many, think. look at how many horrible things. Okay. Look how many and we'll take we'll take evil all the way back to his origins. Look how many horrible things God told his people to do in the Bible. He did he told his people to do sick shit like skinning people alive. Raping people's whole fucking families. Um, what's the guy's name? Um, in Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot. When the angels came to his house and all the men in the town wanted to rape the angels, he offered up his own daughters in exchange for the angels. He's like, "Hey, don't rape the Lord's angels. Rape my daughters instead." What the? F I okay, think yeah, these are the kinds of stories that are in the Bible, y'all. It's a like fucked up thing. But I thought that. God was the ultimate source of good and love and all this other horse shit. Uh, he's literally telling people to wipe out whole tribes of people. That's God what is the biggest the one of the, of the stories that got me the most was when you told me, I don't know what the chapter was, but what is the thing? One of the penalties for being atheist is that God's, you know, children are supposed to go down, kill all the men. Then they grab all the men, women and children. They kill the children in front of the women, then proceed to rape the women after yep. they kill the children. <laughs> I said, the what? Yep. Oh, being God, an atheist is amazing. being an atheist is probably one of the worst things ever. Now you can be a full blown one hundred percent murderer, and Christians believe you can be redeemed. They believe that your soul can be saved. But if you're an atheist, they despise you. And I find it pretty funny all this light and love, but. Look at how fucking bad these people are. Look how well, evil think, they are. They are the worst kind of evil because they're the kind of evil that's masked. They're masked behind the fucking Bible. They use the holy word to do evil. There's nothing worse than that. That's the worst kind of evil you can get. Well, all this religion what stuff was made just for people to feel good. Like, you know, all the heaven and hell shit was just made so people can, you know, like, people were scared after death. Oh, where are we going to go? Heaven or hell, right? So they created the aspect of heaven and hell so we could be like, oh, there's going to be something for us. The Lord is going to save us if we do good. So it's like, But you know like what? A, I wouldn't have a problem with religion if it just came out and was honest about what it was. It's extortion. Follow us, yep. give us your money, or you're going to burn in a lake of fire for all eternity. Why don't you just come out and tell mm -hmm. people you're extorting them? I honestly think, honestly, religion, the whole concept of religion, I think just comes back to just human beings, you know, natural fear of the unknown. We don't know what's going to happen when we die. And that's what's so scary is like, that's our natural fear of just not knowing things. So in order to make ourselves feel better, we create all these magical gods and magical realms to make us be like, okay, when you die, this is what's going to happen. If you do these things, you'll get there. So, you know, you don't have to be scared not knowing what's going to happen when you die. Well, I honestly, that's, I feel that's what I, I, I think. You know, it's the ultimate, I think it's the ultimate set of handcuffs because let like we're, we're here to talk about good and evil. So let's look at it. Look at all the shit that you have to go through if you want to be in the church. Look, but don't touch. Touch, but don't taste. Taste, but don't swallow. Swallow, but don't digest it. Digest it, but don't enjoy it. That's the Bible in a nutshell. <laughs> That's being good in a nutshell. Exactly, bro. Basically, you right. can't do shit. Exactly. You just got to sit here like this every day. Oh, la, 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 the Lord. <laughs> That's all you can fucking do. Looking at a woman, you know, looking at a woman walk down the street is a sin because you have lust in your heart. But I don't even, well, I didn't even say nothing to the lady. I didn't grab her ass. I didn't talk to her. I just simply looked in her direction and noticed that she was good looking. I'm going to burn in a lake of fire for that. Oh, and here's the kicker. We're all born evil. We're all born into sin. It even says it in the Bible. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That means the minute you're born, you're a sinner, whether you did anything or not. And if you go through your whole and life being a good person, this is the ultimate indictment on good right here. You go through your whole life being a good person, helping people, giving to charity. When you die, 
if you haven't got on your knees and asked God to forgive you, you still go to hell. <laughs> yeah. And that's in the Bible. Oh my God. Even if yeah. you're a good person, you still go to hell if you don't get on your knees and ask for forgiveness. Tell me if being good is worth it if that's the prize. <laughs> No, fuck that. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, man. And you know, it's and y'all can go read the Bible right now YouTube. and find that shit if you don't believe it. You have to get on your knees and ask for forgiveness to Repentance, get to heaven. Yeah. You have to. It's part of the, the you know, it's funny. There's a channel on YouTube called uh, Dark Matter 5. five zero, something 20, like that. It's 2525. It's one of my favorite channels. Yeah, I love that channel. There's a video on there where... Uh, where uh, it says, like, what if man didn't eat the fruit? And it's, like, the funniest shit ever, right? Yeah, that's a good of video. I'm going to post that video on the Discord. That's a good video. <laughs> yeah. Of all the things that At the that end, at the end of it, um, God just grabbed the, the apple and stuck it in his mouth. He said, just eat the fucking fruit. Adam, no. <laughs> <'Cause, 'cause laughs> Adam, just, Adam, Adam said, all right, you know what? You told us not to eat the forbidden fruit, so we're not going to do it. And it, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the video on the Discord. Y'all need to see it. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, and there's another one too where uh, where atheists go to heaven and they're just they're just in there just roasting God. And one guy, oh actually, yeah, when he it's when he to be uh, funny. God became an atheist and he sent all the Christians to hell and put all the atheists in heaven. Yeah, that was a funny video. That, yeah, and the guy, that, one of the guys, actually made a good point because he said. If you had came out and he basically says, if you had came out and said that you were real, and instead you're going to punish everybody for eternity for not basically following your word when you just didn't tell everybody that you exist, you know, you want to know how you want to know how you get rid of atheism. Let me tell you how you get rid of atheism right now. God is omnipresent. That means that every one of us can see him all at the same time. He's um, he's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's all of that. He's, he's spaceless, timeless, whatever. If you want to get rid of atheists, you can literally appear in the sky before everybody right now. I am the Lord, your God. I'm going to be on my knees with everybody else if I see some shit like that. <laughs> so that's, that's all it'll take. If you're this fucking powerful, omnipresent ass motherfucker, why haven't you done that? Why are you sending crazy fuckers with holy books to talk to us? Why does a God need little? Why does God need the motherfuckers that He created to speak on His behalf? Why do you need a Pope? You're fucking God. <laughs> Rosekin is trying to convert you. Imagine that shit. Imagine being a. Imagine, imagine being a creature powerful enough to one create its own self. Because according to Christians, God does not have a beginning. He's just there. He just started everything. Because they don't want to get into the, well, how did God get here? Did he have a dad? And did that nigga have a dad? So they all say, well, God just appeared one day instantly. We can't with, fathom it. It's too Yeah, powerful. he just yeah. appeared and he just started making shit. So you made yourself and then you made the whole everything. All the, <laughs> the trillions of stars. All these planets. All this shit. And you reduce yourself to an old virgin sitting in a gold chair to be your, your voice. <laughs> a nigga with that kind of power and your voice on earth is a 74 year old virgin with a stupid hat. <laughs> Come the on, of, man. All right. The story of the Greek yeah. gods were way more entertaining than the Bible. Zeus is a badass. <laughs> Zeus yeah. would take human form, go down and bang everybody's wife in the whole village, and have a bunch of demigods. Honestly, <laughs> the Greek gods were basically just what if humans had godlike power? That's what. Well, the Greek you know gods what they were? were? The Greek gods were humans who declared themselves as gods. They were all humans, mm -hmm. and they said one day we're gods. And then people started worshiping them as gods. And then they found out the more worship they got, they actually started gaining powers. The, the Greek gods died because people stopped believing in them. The source of their power was prayer from, from mortals. That's how that's how Zeus was so powerful. That's how all of them were so powerful. And but when the prayer stopped, you know their powers ran out. And you know but what's they, crazy? They actually started out as mortals, according to the story, anyway. Listen, I, I know all you know of the religious stories because I've studied all that. I've studied all that crap. I know the origins and beginnings of all these crazy gods. And I also know the most important thing. 
Man created God. God didn't create man. We made them motherfuckers. That's why there's 166,000 of them, because we created them. And if you don't believe me, you can go look it up right now. There's 166,000 gods that human beings created. Oh, fucking gods. Uh, yeah, there's a yeah. god for everything. There's a god for that microphone you're wearing. The mic god. I ain't fucking with you. <laughs> the mic god. There's literally a god of sex. And you know what's crazy? Is, is the aspect of heaven and hell. So if you go to heaven and they say, okay, you can't feel sadness or hurt you go to heaven and somebody that you love goes to hell this is the crazy part that always gets me somebody you love goes to hell so you're up in heaven and you're not supposed to feel sad or anger or nothing so that means in a sense to a degree if you go to heaven you have to lose a bit of your free will yep because yep. that means if you go to hell if somebody goes to hell you know well here's then, here's an even worse scenario you know, here's an even worse scenario mm -hmm. Um, somebody kills somebody that you love or care about and they repent and go to heaven and the person that they yeah. kill oh didn't repent God. and they go to hell and then you die and go to heaven and you get to spend eternity laughing and skipping through the sunflowers with a person that murdered somebody you care about while the person that you love <laughs> is burning in hell does that make mm -hmm. sense to anybody nope, nope. never made sense to me bro that's crazy is in hell, you, you basically have to get, I, I've heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but I have somebody that's very religious. Look, my this. woman just said, basically. you don't know it when you're in heaven. That means that your free will has been stripped. So the whole God yeah. gave us free will, you, that makes it bullshit. That means that if you, you, can, you, can't feel if you don't have heaven. the ability yeah. to remember what happened to you, how you got there, all the shit, then that means your, your memories, everything has been stripped and you're just a drone walking yeah. around but Here's when you go to hell, you know what hell is? Hell is repetition. You have to relive all your worst moments ever in your life over and over and over again. So don't you find it funny? You go to hell, you remember everything. You go to heaven, they strip you and make you a drone. And mm -hmm. let's, let's do this. Also in heaven, you do this all day. It's even in the Bible. You spend <laughs> every day worshiping the Lord. You on your hands and knees every day. Uh, thank you <laughs> Honestly, for letting me not burn. <laughs> Honestly, nobody can go to heaven. Well, according to you know Catholic, uh, you know lore, because one of the things about about it is if you lie, you have every time you lie, you have to go to like a priest and confess that I lied about this. If you yep. miss even one time, you go to hell. I just got a question. There is not a single person in the world who hasn't lied and can remember every single thing they like. I Everybody got a question. Lies. How many of y'all are on y'all knees 24-7, seven days a week, praising and worshiping God right now? How many of y'all are doing that? Never did that once I haven't been to life. church in like eight okay. years. Okay. You're, you're not doing that in your I daily life it. right now. Nobody in here is doing it. Nobody in the chat is doing it. So I want you to imagine this. Imagine a scenario where you end up in heaven and something you've never done in your whole life, you get to do it for the rest of eternity. I tell that motherfucker it, to send it me to hell. Like, <laughs> it sounds like celestial North Korea. <laughs> I tell that motherfucker no, no. to send me straight to hell. I, Fuck I it. Sounds like it, sounds like celestial North Korea. It sounds like that's what Kim Jong-un would want. I, I just, uh, I don't think it's worth it that like if you you have to do all of this, you like you literally have to be inhuman in order to make it to heaven. You have to do this for eighty plus years. Let's say it was possible. You do all this shit. You you can serve yourself. You do all this crazy shit. What's your reward? Oh well, you get to praise this you know big oh, ass thing in the, the best sky. Part of it. And don't you know the best you, part. you forget everything. Don't forget the best part. You got to give away all your shit because in the Bible it says that rich men can't even get into heaven. So if you're if you accumulate wealth, you have to give it all away before you die. You have to, that's that's why you see those super religious people. Well, you're fucked. That's why you see all those super religious people dying poor because it's part of their religion that they have to give away everything so that they can secure their place in heaven. That's why you have a lot of rich guys give all their money. Like there was this one guy uh, a couple of weeks ago I read about had eight billion dollars, gave it all away because his religion told him to because that's the only way he can secure. His place in heaven. 
but now he's living in like a one bedroom piece of shit apartment, no money, basically waiting to die. When he had eight billion dollars at his disposal, fuck that. I already made up in my mind. <laughs> I already decided by the time I get to hell with all the scientists and great thinkers that are down there, they'll have air conditioning, they'll have cable, it'll have internet, <laughs> all that shit will be in hell. We'll have soft drink machines because all the people like me, the thinkers, the, the scientists and the people that create shit, they all go to hell because according to Christians, science is from the devil. Science was created by the devil to be with us and take us away from God. So throw your cell phone in the trash, boys and girls, because it's evil. And it was <laughs> made to keep you away from God. How many of y'all want to join me in the great cell phone revival? Well, we all unanimously toss our phones <laughs> in the garbage. Uh, fuck that bullshit. Exactly. No. How come everything that you have That's... to do to get into heaven is complete opposite of the way we all live? You can't fuck. You can't play video games. You can't have technology. You can't look in a certain direction. You can't eat certain food. You can't work on Sunday. You can't do, fucking do this. It's impossible. It's impossible to follow that fucking book. That book is the ultimate form of evil. That's the reason why I read the Bible. <laughs> I read the Bible because the greatest source of evil on earth is the Bible. Honestly, I think the best way to look at it is um, one theory I think you said was God gave us free will. He gave us, you know, the ability to think for ourselves, you know, do what we want, you know, rationalize how we feel. He creates this book of impossible law, this impossible thing. Okay, you have free will. You have the will to read it and think for yourself. Now, any rational person would think this is complete and utter bullshit. This is how could we have ever live like this? I'm not going to live like this. Yep. Ah, see, you're using your free will. The one theory that I love is that the idea that atheists are the ones who go to heaven, the Christians go to hell, because atheists actually use their free will, whereas Christians are just slaves. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I gave you free will, and you chose to be a slave. You chose I asked to this a long time ago on a live stream. I so asked you this a long time ago. I said, what would everybody do? Because, you know, at the end times where everybody gets judged, I said, what would everybody do if God was a prankster? What if we all waiting to be judged, the book of life, whatever, and everybody walk up and all the Christians go to hell and all the atheists go to heaven? Or what if God's like, hey, <laughs> what if God say, hey, you know, I've been fucking with y'all for like millions of years. Honestly, there ain't really no heaven or hell. We all just going to stand here for the rest of eternity. What if it was like a big fucking joke? Or what if we all get there and there ain't no God? Or what if we get there and there's, there's just a devil? Like none of us know. Ain't nobody taking a trip and then coming back and saying, hey, man, I was just over at God's spot. That shit is tight. Ain't nobody coming <laughs> back saying that shit. Don't it's it's final. You don't <laughs> find out nothing till you're gone. How, that is that right there alone tells you it's something wrong with the idea. Oh, it's great over there, but we can't tell you how great until you're dead. Uh, Fuck. The thing is, uh, they sorry. can't explain the Holocaust. Sorry to interrupt you guys, but I gotta, you gotta go. go. All right, yeah, bros, I, I, gotta, you, man. All right. I gotta be at work at five thirty in the morning. Oh yeah, you ain't got no time to bullshit around me. I catch it with you, bro. <laughs> But um, I was saying that the whole the idea of the Holocaust, right? Christians can't explain why would a good, loving God kill like billions? I mean, millions of people. Why right? would He yeah. send Hitler to kill millions of people? Why would He send a fucking typhoon to wash away innocent people? <laughs> the Lord sent this as there. a punishment for sin, and all the people that got washed away are devout Christians. Like you remember Christians when you remember when, when Louisiana got hit. Me. You remember when you remember when Kurt, uh, Hurricane Katrina came through, and they was like, "This was the, the the Christians all down there praying over the spot where people <laughs> done died. This was divine retribution for all the sin and all the things going on here. And maybe it's time to make a change. You want to know the area that didn't get hit? The red light district where they selling drugs and pussy all night. <laughs> that, but but the innocent people who were not doing that shit got killed by this divine retribution." That shit is horse shit. Let me tell you what it really was. It's called a natural fucking disaster. Called this planet <laughs> reacting to us. Just like COVID. Kenneth Copeland and these crazy fucks. The Lord sent COVID to test us. To test our worthiness. No. Our stupid asses. <laughs> human beings. 
We keep fucking with shit we don't understand. We fuck with them bats over there in China, and they fit, <laughs> they made some shit, came over here, and it done <laughs> mutated into COVID. We went over there in the weeds, fucking with them goddamn monkeys. We got HIV. Ebola. Every Ebola. time we go fucking with shit, we find some new shit. It ain't, it ain't that big of, I mean, it ain't rocket science. Stay your ass out of these areas where humans shouldn't. Like, they just opened an ancient tomb the other day. It ain't been open in like 5,000 years. Do you know how many diseases you could have let into our world? Maybe it was sealed for That's a reason. Crazy. Maybe that motherfucker had, like, the Egyptian version of AIDS. <laughs> I, I, I just canceled. don't see the fascination yeah. of digging up dead people and be like, ooh, look, is this dude from a you, thousand years ago? Okay. Hey, you, you see the fascination. You said it earlier. Because we're morbid, evil creatures. The The real mm. reason we dig them up is because we want all the gold and jewels that they were buried with. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. guess what? Greed leads to anger. Anger <laughs> leads to... Yo, that's high. <laughs> the they funny thing... When if you learn that a motherfucker's been buried, let's say in your town where you live, you learn that a, a dude's been buried with ten million dollars, and you wait till you watching your clock like one in the morning. Man, I headed to the graveyard. What? Man, they buried that nigga with a million dollars. <laughs> you get down there with your shovel. It's already twenty niggas down there, bit all that digging because they already thinking like you. <laughs> Shit, you don't. You actually buried this nigga with money, and you think we ain't finna dig his ass up? <laughs> I'll pick that nigga up out of his casket. Excuse me, Holmes. <laughs> Start filling that bag up. I sure will. <laughs> You're disgracing the dead. Fuck that nigga. That's some money right there. <laughs> shit. What Everybody watching right dead? now. Y'all know y'all would do the same shit. Don't lie. Yeah. It's in us, boys and girls. It's in us. <laughs> You can get canceled uh -huh. for blaming the Chinese government for COVID, and they would be like, oh, you're anti-Asian. Oh, I already got hit with that. Listen, guys, <laughs> if there is an ism oh, for it, then I've been hit with it. <laughs> Sexism, <laughs> racism, Chinaism, Asiaism, I've been hit with all of them. <laughs> and I have an ism of my own. Fuck you-ism. I don't give a shit. I t <laughs> Listen, guy, I'm telling each and every one of y'all, some of y'all might still be holding on to your humanity. Or you might be holding on to that last little speck of good in you. I'm yeah. telling you, join me and you will see what I'm talking about. You're going to have that moment one day where you're going to say, you know what? You're going to be a good fucking person being nice and all kind of shit. And some of the worst shit ever going to happen to you. You know what you're going to say? You know, NBA told me to stop being a good motherfucker because this is what my, my fucking reward. And you're going to snap and you're going to be just like this. <laughs> I'm done. Dark side. Honestly, that's gonna be. I'm telling you, guys. I remember the exact fucking moment it happened to me. I remember. I was doing all that goody goody <laughs> shit. I remember when it happened to me. And I'm telling you, every last one, especially you young dudes. Y'all niggas are young. Y'all got plenty of time. I'm almost fifty. I'm telling y'all, you gonna have that moment, that day. That time, it might be a girlfriend, it might be a job, it might even be a relative. Something is going to shift you, and your lightsaber going to turn red. You're going to be done. The eyes turn yellow. Yeah, the eyes turn yellow. You're going to be laying on that hill. I hate you! That's going to be you. It's going to I'm telling you, it's all of us. You can't fight it. I fought mine for years, and I finally gave in. I sure did, and I'm loving it. I am a Sith Lord, and I won't go back. Honestly, I think when it comes to just life in general, when you want to get shit done, like people always talk about like the two things, like the power of love, the power of hatred, all love <laughs> conquers all, hatred is better. Honestly, I don't I, I don't think either one is the powerful. I think the most powerful emotion is no emotion. It's apathy. Because you got to think about it. If you don't care about anything or anyone, nothing's going to stop you. Well, You're you not need to listen to Darth Treya then. Apathy is death. If you that's that's you need to listen to dark. I'm gonna actually put a video in this in the Discord for y'all to hear. And it's it's the words of Darth Treya. You need to listen to it. Because one of the things she says is apathy is death. And she was so firm in her convictions as a Sith Lord, like at the end of it, she's talking to this other Jedi and she told him, she said, I would have let the, the universe die to preserve you. 
She said, I would have let everything die for you. This one motherfucking Jedi that she cared about. Because that's all it was. She wanted to preserve this one Jedi because this Jedi had the ability to destroy the whole force. This Jedi had the ability to end the force. Because she absolutely, as a Sith Lord, she hate the force. It's her whole thing. She wanted to destroy it. And she was willing to destroy a whole universe to do it. That is the right. kind of evil I'm talking about. Oh, right. Oh, by the you way, I'm being head out. Huh? Uh, I, I got to go to the gym. So I'm oh, dude, out. you good. Look All at right. this old suave ass dude talking about I got to go to the gym. Oh, good looking ass nigga. Get off here. <laughs> <laughs> nigga making me, making me look bad and old and shit. Yeah, I got to take my young suave ass to the gym. <laughs> got that slick back Enrique Iglesias hair and shit. Fuck y'all. Fuck all you young looking niggas. Just tell you now, y'all get an instant fuck you for looking better than me. It's as simple as that. For real, man. <laughs> but look, I, I'm going to tell you, I, listen, I, w- I want you guys, honestly, for real, there's some homework y'all can do. I want you to honestly ex- just examine your day. Don't just go through your day doing your shit. Pay attention to your day and see how people treat you when you're nice versus how they treat you when you're a fucking dickhead. And you'll notice something. Less people will like you, but more people will respect you and get the fuck out of your way. And you'll get more stuff done that way than having a crowd of douchebags around you that love you. I'm telling you. That's just like some of my guys have started doing this. I told them, I said, take whatever you make it work. I don't care how much it is. If you only make 10000 anybody who makes less than that, stop hanging with them. Call them and cut them off, and your life will get yeah. better. And several of my guys have already done that, and they say, NBA. <laughs> You were fucking right. When I cut them bastards off, yes, they were mad, but shit got better for me. Telling you, if you make 50, anybody below 50 say, look, I know we've been friends for 10 years, but being friends with you is going to keep me right here in this spot. I want to go that way. I want to go up. I'm telling y'all it works. And it's mean, it's horrible, it's terrible, but it'll make your life better. Cut all the excess bullshit out of your life. I'm only nice to one group of people. And actually, it's just my woman. Like, I'm nice to her. I, I'm not nice to the kids at all. They'll tell you. You deserve my <laughs> son came here. I called him a douchebag. Fuck do you want? That's how I am. I love my son, but I'm not nice at all because right. I know what's facing him. I know what the world's going to do to him if I don't show him what pure evil is. Now, I'm going to let him choose which one he want to do. If he want to be a goody-goody, I'm going to let him. But I'm letting him see how people are going to treat him in the real world. Folks ain't going to be nice. Know. Yeah, yeah, because the real world, if you're nice, the real world is just gonna eat you up, spit mm-hmm. you out. I at least want him to know what he's facing. And I want all you guys who follow me, I want y'all to understand it too. Like I said, y'all got the advantage of youth right now, but I'm telling you, somebody somewhere is gonna set you off. And the last thing you're gonna see, the last thing you're gonna remember before that anger kicks in is the, the Darth Vader helmet coming down and that, <laughs> that sound that it makes when it locks into place. That's going to be you. You're going to be like, damn it. NBA <laughs> told me this would happen. You, you, you're going to literally yeah, start going to your neighbor's houses, knock on the door. Excuse me. Um, We've been neighbors for five years, and i just been wanting to say, uh, I fucking don't like you. You need to clean up this nasty-ass fucking yard. Get these badass kids out the fucking street. You a piece of – I mean, you're going to – I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, you're going to be shocked at yourself because I done mm-hmm. that shit. I mean, you know, like a lot of it is bent up. Like I remember when I was reading uh, Injustice, it was this crazy moment when uh, after Lois died, uh, Dark Side's son, I can't remember his name, he came down to Earth with all the paradooms and shit. And uh, Superman was like holding him down at some point or whatever. And he's like, uh, oh, you're not going to do it. He's like, oh, because uh, um, you guys always just beat us and then we just come back. And Superman's mm-hmm. like, oh, no, not today. And he's just, yeah, like he kills him. Him. I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and, and the, the injustice story, the reason they created it is because basically what they were doing is they were saying, what happens mm. when the the best of the best decides to say fuck it and and, mm. and switch sides? That's Superman was the pinnacle of good. The, he was a higher level of good than Batman could ever be. Superman is true good. Mm. Batman is like a grayish, shady kind of good. But Superman was like speaking. Yes. Superman turning no, bad and they were, is way different than Batman turning bad. See, the Batman who laughs, the guy on my shirt, this is Batman 
who got infected by a Joker virus. This is what happened. This Batman, he he killed the oh, Joker. I thought that was the Joker. No, this is Batman. He killed the Joker, and after the Joker died, a toxin from his heart was released, a gas, and it infected Bruce Wayne, and he became the Batman who laughs. And no. that's why he that's why he's so fucking incredibly powerful and so hard to kill, so hard to beat. His first move after transforming into the Batman who laughs is he wiped out the whole Justice League. They never stood a chance because he has Joker's craziness and all the ingenuity, money, and, and intelligence of Bruce Wayne. Like, dude is an absolute beast. But that's what I'm talking about. The Joker proves my point. Everybody is just one bad day from where I'm at. The whole point of the Dark Knight movie, what the Joker was trying to prove, was that anybody could be the Joker. That was his point. When he, you remember yeah, in the, in the scene that, where he said, "If y'all don't kill this guy, I'm gonna blow up a hospital." Look how many people set out to kill that guy. The Joker was proving <laughs> that anybody could be the Joker. I'm proving that on YouTube every day that anybody can be me, because all it takes is that one little thing, and then boom, you got another NBA run around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll see what I'm talking about. If y'all niggas ever start channels, y'all be trying it all. To, like, I'll tell you a great example. William in the Discord. William has the potential to make great content. He wastes his time doing all that sports shit, talking all that nice, nice stuff. Got all those, those, those sponsors and stuff on his channel. The only videos that he makes that are good ones is when he turn on his phone and he just let it rip. It's natural. It's great. But when he's on that podcast with all them dudes, it's boring because it's so it's, scripted. He's not like, being himself. Yeah, it's and like one of those lot of things. Th it's like one of those things where, like, you ever just like I don't know, you ever just like do good things and like you know you're doing good things and it's like yeah, it's, it's, it's nice and everything. But like you ever just feel like when people push you over there, it's just like it's just this weight. It's just like crushing you, crushing you, crushing you. You don't you like, and then you reach that breaking point, and you just let it all out. You say the yeah. most horrible shit. You say everything that's on your mind, and it's like, I swear, it is the most liberating feeling. The good ever. thing about me is, it's, see, you're talking about getting pushed over the edge. I live over the edge. I'm already there. I'm just waiting really? on everybody else to join me. See, <laughs> why do you think it's so easy for me to say the horrible shit? Like if somebody come on. And I tell them, go jump off a bridge and take your mama with you. It, it's natural. I don't even have to think about it because I'm already over the edge. I've been there already. A lot of people, they use the over the edge thing to say and do shit they already wanted to do. It's already in their heart. Mm -hmm. And they just say, okay, I had this build up and finally. That's like when somebody kills somebody. Oh, this guy been fucking with me for a year. I can't took it no, take it no more. Finally explode and kill him. No, you want to kill him anyway. You just use that fake build-up shit as an excuse. Same thing with YouTube. Somebody wants to make a video about you, they're going to wait for you to do something, and then they're going to say, ah, finally he gave me an opening. But the truth is, they already wanted to make a video about you anyway. They just fucking made an excuse. Yeah. Over the edge is an excuse to say and do what you already want to say and do. That's why I don't do that. I just yeah. say and do what I want to do. It's like that, uh, the saying that, like, you know how they say, like, oh, what is it? Oh, oh, when you get a bunch of money, it'll change you as a person. Nope. And it's like, well, no, because you got to think about it. Like, if money, because the, the idea is that when you get a bunch of money, you become, like, an evil person. Well, if that's true, then how come someone like Bill Gates, if, if money turns, turns you into an evil person, you get, you know, power crazy. Why does this dude waste Billions of dollars on charity. Him and, his wife, him and his wife gave away $28 billion. Exactly. Money, money did not turn Bill Gates into a bad person. Money brought out what he already was. Guys, money does not change you. Money reveals your true nature. Bill Gates was a yeah, nice, good, decent person. He's always been a nice, good, decent person. When he became a billionaire... <laughs> He kept on being a nice, decent person. That's why him and his wife has given away $28 billion. His wife is finna divorce him, by the way, after 27 years. So she's probably finna get another $20 billion in the <laughs> settlement. But he's a yeah, he's just, a Bill Gates is a genuine 
good person. Like he is a really good person. I don't think I've ever heard that man say a bad word to anybody. Uh, interviews, right. and I've never heard him cuss. I've never heard him say anything horrible. He's never said anything controversial. He's a genuine good person. He is the polar opposite of what I am. I could never be as good as him. I couldn't even pretend to be that good because you guys would see right through it. It would be so fake if I tried it. <laughs> I've spent too much time being I who I am. Like I mean, like I said, I can fake it for a little bit, but you guys start laughing because y'all know instantly what it is. It's bullshit. I just want people, I don't care if you're a good person or not, be what you are. The people right. that I don't like, really, that piss me off the most on YouTube are the ones pretending to be bad people when you really know they're goody goodies. Or the vice versa, the ones that are horrible bastards, but they're pretending to be nice people. Those are the ones I don't like on YouTube. Them are the worst people. And you know, I hate the ones that are just too positive. Like, I, I know I unsubbed from like, like three Walking Dead channels because they would do oh, reviews for them. Have yeah, you been on one of them channels where, the... where you can't even say shit like you can't say the word crap? Like words like oh, that, they'll, they'll ban you from that. the chat. Yeah, then you'll, you'll say like, um, like you black and you'll say nigga, they'll be like, hey, don't so say that. I'll get, I'll get demonetized or you can't be saying that. Like on yep. stream, I'm just like, bro, I don't like you putting me in shackles, bro. I don't want that. Like, yep. yeah. I'm trying to be free. Listen, that's what chaotic good is. That's what I was talking about at the beginning of the stream. Chaotic good is when you're trying to do good so hard that you start to cause problems. You start to actually do bad. You have an adverse and effect. Like, Think about it. Some, some, you're so you're so positive on your channel. That people can't even be, they can't even talk. I, I don't mind people talking shit in my chat as long as they ain't directing it at people. Like, if you want to sit in the chat and shoot the shit, that's fine. But if you're in the chat saying, oh, fuck them niggas on the panel right now, you're leaving. Because we, you have the free speech to say it and all that, but we have a free speech to not have to listen to it. Free speech is a two way street. Mm -hmm. Like, as simple as that. People don't understand that. They love to come and say, free speech, free speech, but they overlook the fact that we also have free speech. And when free speech bumps against each other, mm -hmm. the one with the power wins. And that just happens to be me. Yeah. So and, my free and, speech and, overrides and, theirs because I kick them the fuck out of here. Yeah. I, I, I just like I like Geekton channel. Like I like Geekton channel, but I feel like he's kind of stuck now too to where well, like, he is. If he's not if he's not because but Geekton knows how to play the card. You I remember think, when I told where, Geekton I told Geekton that if he's not going to turn into a bad guy, he needs to become more of a good guy. And we talked about that in the live stream we did together. See, I know I know humans because, like I said, I'm a humanist. I study humans. I understand human nature. That's why shit don't surprise me on here because I know this. You guys ever wonder how I know somebody's going to get mad and make a fake account once I ban them? Because <laughs> it's human nature to not be able to take an L. So if, when yeah. I ban somebody, I know in a few minutes they're going to be back with a fake account because human nature won't let them drop it. They can't let it go. Well, I told Geekdom said he needs to become more of a good guy if, if you're not going to be a bad guy because by becoming more of a good guy, you're, you're catering to your audience, your views will go up, and you'll be better off for it. I said, or he take my approach. If I had 700,000 subscribers – and I was making the kind of money off my channel that he is, I would literally turn on my camera right here where I'm sitting. And I would say, hey, look, I done made a few million dollars off this channel. <laughs> I got a lot of subscribers. I'm secure for the rest of my life. No more fanboy shit. Fuck all of y'all. I sure would. And when I wake up the next day, the only people that'll be left on the channel are the real motherfuckers that follow me through thick and thin. All the fake bandwagoners will be gone. I've done that on my channel. How many times? You niggas will watch me live tell niggas right. to get the fuck out of here. And I'm not even making money on here like Geekdom is, but I still do it because I have the courage of my conviction. I don't want you here if you fake or if you just follow me because you want to be along for the ride. All them mm -hmm. ex-league niggas that used to follow me, they guess what? It's just like Batman said. They left because when it came down to it, they didn't have the courage to finish the mission. We all have right. one mission in the league to fuck this thing up. 
I'm here to do <laughs> as much damage to YouTube as I hum humanly possible before they kick me off of it. All them dudes that used to follow me were on board with that. You want to know the only dudes that are left? Well, just look in the chat. People like Dark Joey and Sam, people like that. Them guys didn't go nowhere because they were committed to the mission. If you don't have the, if you don't have a commitment, like I just tell people the truth. This ain't the place. We had a guy come here the other day. Oh, NBA, I love you. Dude, you done fucked up. You walk in the door <laughs> with that shit. I love you. <laughs> Who the fuck you think you're talking to? You would have had more, you would have had more luck coming in saying, man, I hate you. But you man. got a nice Discord. That would have been better. That that's the one thing <laughs> I just can't stand. It's when people tell you how much they love you. Like, I love you so much. Nigga, you don't know anything about me. How can you love me? Like, that's, what do you, it's like when you, when you, you know, you listen to, uh, you know, you have like, you know, these young people and they have like their favorite music artists. And like, I love Drake. I love Ariana Grande or some shit. Okay, what do you know about them? They Nothing. make music and um, they're like 20 something. And Drake's real name is Aubrey Graham. And that's about it. That's they enough, love they me, but love don't somebody? even know. They love me, but don't even know my email address. Like, <laughs> I love you, NBA. You're incredible. Yeah, you, you know my email. Uh, you know, you know my middle name. <laughs> Nigga, I've been doxxed, and you still don't know my name. <laughs> Fuck out of here. You don't love me. And they, they hey want guys, me. I, gotta go. I got bad. I had this one stream where I was being probably the worst evil bastard ever. It, it's been deleted, but I had like. People kept coming in. Why are you so mean? Why don't you be nice to people? You should tell you should care about your subscribers. And I had to explain to them. My subscriber base has flipped over 10 different times where people love me, hate me, love me, hate me, love me, hate me. And I try to explain to everybody. The reason I don't get mad at them is because they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. They come for entertainment. Then at some point they decide they don't like me anymore. They go off into the sunset. That's YouTube. The ones mm -hmm. I don't like are the ones who stay around for five years telling me how much they hate me. And the other side, the ones that stay around for five years telling me how much they love me. Those are not normal people. Normal people are people who watch shit a couple years and then they get old and tired of it. Like, I was sub to Geekdom for a long time. Geekdom, my boy. But I don't watch Geekdom's content no more. I know everything he's going to say. I've been watching Dragon Ball longer than he has. I'm older than Geekdom. Been around longer. So I don't it ain't I don't I, I don't not watch his content cuz I'm mad at him or whatever. It, I just know it already. I know everything there's to know about fucking Dragon Ball. So there's so like no, he made that series about yeah. the all that yeah, transformations. Okay. Yeah. Like, why do I need to know about the transformations? His hair turns gold. Yeah, his the transformation gold guy. Electricity. Yeah, it's bullshit. I don't need to know that. You know, but I got <laughs> Uh, I got called all kinds of shit for that, you know. You're betraying Geekdom. Let's get something straight. You can't betray anybody on here because ain't nobody in this motherfucker. Like us, us three dudes on here right now. They ain't, we ain't sitting down at Applebee's, dapping it up, eating a steak. All right. One cannot be betrayed if one has no people. Go watch Usual Suspects, Kaiser Soze. One cannot be betrayed if one has no people. That's why you don't see me in these funky ass groups like Kevin Samuels in the fucking Gale sphere, <laughs> Manosphere, whatever the fuck these niggas is. I'm not a part of no shit like that because once you form a group like that and get that group identity, you're fucked. And you the league, yes, we have a group. We're called the league, but everybody in here is an individual thinker. Anybody can leave anytime they want. You could you could leave right now and make a video saying fuck NBA and the league, and that'll be the end of it. <laughs> Look how many people have done it. 20, 30, 40 niggas and said, man, fuck NBA. I don't fuck with you no more. And then the next day, there's a video up. Why I left the league. Dear diary. You know that gay ass shit. But there ain't and then six months later, they're coming back. Yeah. But look how many of them that came back. Hey, NBA, I'm sorry, man. I, I was having a rough day. And what do I always <laughs> tell them? Back to me. You cannot <laughs> live with your failure. They hate when I play that, but it's so fucking true. How many niggas, how many times y'all done said in my chat, and y'all done seen niggas in the chat who swear they would never look at my videos again, but they in the chat. Happens every time. Because they love me. And they hate me. 
which is kind of <laughs> weird. They, they they be like, man, fuck this nigga NBA. They go search on YouTube, man. Fuck this shit's boring as hell. Yep. No no one does it like NBA. Um, hey NBA, I'm I'm sorry I said all that shit about you. Yep. Just, can, oh, I, can I, I come back to league, nigga? Oh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start doing live streams where I read the dear John emails. I'm gonna just start keeping <laughs> them because normally I just delete them because I ain't trying to embarrass people. But I'm gonna start showing y'all what I have to deal with every day. How many times I get, hey man, can I come back? Please don't tell anybody I asked you. Like no bullshit. <laughs> It's a bunch of these dudes, man. They fucking can't stand me. They hanging out with people who don't like me, but they'll fucking write me an email. Hey, man, I'm sorry, man. What can I do to come back? Blah, blah, blah. What? What What happened? You you thought I was dead, and then I'm back. Man, I'm like, nigga, you gay as hell. Why? You, I, I'm trying to come back to you, NBA. Why are you trying to come back to a nigga you don't know, doesn't fuck with you? Well, nigga, go you know do what your, it's like? your life. It's like, life. it's like choking somebody until they, they stop moving and they stop they stop everything and then you think they're dead and then you start to walk off and then you hear <laughs> <laughs> you turn around like oh shit he's still alive and then you run back and try to give him mouth to mouth that's what it is because they thought I was dead when all that shit went down Mad Black Entertainment is done his whole everything is over now I'm three times bigger than I was I got six channels making money now. Back then, I only had one channel making money. Now I got six channels making money. Them niggas are like, oh, shit. We took our hands off his throat too soon. <laughs> and now they can't stop me. It's a snowball rolling down a hill now. And they, niggas have Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> man, listen. When that nigga paid me $5 just to call me a bitch, I was like this. It was like, this nigga gave me a donation to call me a name? Shit. It, has anybody ever made you mad enough that you paid them to insult them? <laughs> no, I'm just imagining that if that exchange in real life. Here, I'm going to give you $15. Fuck you, you're a bitch-ass nigga. Imagine what walking up to a dude and saying, hand him a $5 dollar bill. You walk, imagine that. You walk up to a dude right now. Hey, man, hold his $5. Man, I fucking hate you. <laughs> Only Thanks. on the internet is this kind of stupid shit possible. Only on the internet. I remember when Don King used to say, only in America. Man, nigga paid me five bucks just to say you a bitch. Dude, are you kidding me? You could give um, me you could give me 15, 20 bucks and do that. Go for it. I, I, I'll be like, hey, wait, can you, can you call me a bitch again? Can you do it again? Yo, you heard what I said on the earlier stream. I say if I say look, I said for ten dollars you can call me a bitch. For twenty dollars, you can call me a bitch ass, and for fifty dollars, you can call me a bitch ass nigga. You sure can. I know it's not true. Y'all know it's not true. But on the, the the on the side, I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> yeah. hey, nigga, man, thank you no. for this new. Thanks for this new PS5 game you just paid for. You know they already paid for this new man cave. Shit. I swear the internet makes people insane. Like the idea of paying someone just yeah, to insult it, them. I'm like. You have to be put in a straight jacket for that shit. I'll put you in a straight hey, jacket. Who you think bought this lightsaber? <laughs> <laughs> this is troll money, baby. Man. <laughs> who you who you think bought my, my green rank my green ranger dagger? This troll money. My my woman don't care what I do with this YouTube money. She don't give a fuck what I, I do with it. I can spend this I shit like crazy. And I'm I'm getting it from niggas that hate me. I didn't understand this, guys. I didn't understand this. I really didn't understand it. When I was doing YouTube for a few years, I did not understand that you could monetize people's hatred. You could monetize their anger. And I did it. I did. Yeah. Hate but you know, it's the funniest shit. Hate it's the funniest anger. shit in the world. Anger leads to rage. Them. Rage leads to you giving me super chat. <laughs> It'd be the funniest shit in the world when you be having people trolls get on the thing on the chat, and they just and they say shit to piss you off, but the shit don't even make sense. And it, it don't make like me mad. Either. Shit it don't make, and that's the intended purpose. See, and the intended gives you, purpose it gives is to you piss an me off. Roast them. It's it's it, they're trying to mm. piss me off to get me off my game because they see the the meteoric rise. They see that my streams are are growing. 
They see that my fucking shit's getting bigger and they don't like it. Mm -hmm. When they saw that stream where I had almost 500 people watching, they got scared. It's like, oh, fuck. And then you notice right after that, you notice the stream right after that, we got got attacked by 20, 30 trolls all of a sudden. Because they they got (laughs) scared. They said, oh, shit, this nigga getting big again. Honestly, it's just... The funny funny thing is, though, that I don't think they even realize is that people people love it when you get angry and go off on the people in the trolls. Like, in the chat, the the trolls in the chat. Have you noticed what I've been doing now with my anger? See, y'all, mm. y'all watch me and y'all haven't even figured this shit out. What I do with my anger now is I focus it on my topic. The mm. Derek Chauvin stream everybody likes so much, you notice I wasn't going off on trolls. I wasn't going off on losers. I was going off on that really bad verdict. I thought that and that man got a raw deal. I did, really did. And, and, you know, and I, I spoke to a lot of friends and family. And because I know it was a very controversial topic and a lot of people I spoke to, they didn't watch the full video from beginning to end. I watched your take on it. I watched Stephen Crowder's take on it. And I went back and I watched the video myself multiple times to see if maybe I missed something. And I did. I, I, apart from him looking up into the camera and making that face, I don't I didn't see anything wrong with it. I mean, and, well, I, and people always say, oh, well, he should have they should have. The cop needs to burn. They need to just I think die. That, but I'm like, this is why I got upset. Mm-hmm. I got upset because right after Black Lives Matter made a threat to burn down the city, and then, oops, excuse me, and then the Congresswoman Maxine Waters mm-hmm. on live TV, a Congresswoman telling the people that we need to be confrontational. That was the word she used. If you're the jury, and you know that you can acquit this man. But you also know that these crazy fuckers outside know where you live. Do you really think he had a chance of walking out of that courtroom? He, he, he didn't. <clears throat> the people on the, the jury fact- had been doxxed. People who were members of the jury, everybody knew where they live. They knew what fucking schools their kids went to. Black Lives Matter is out on the courthouse step saying... Get the pit, get the, 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 the pitchforks and the torches, because if he walks, we burn in the town. You knew what the, that right there should have been your fucking cue that that man was going to be found guilty. And then when his lawyer asked for a change of venue, he said, your honor, this area has been prejudiced because the whole damn town is against my client. Can we have a change of venue to where we can have the trial in a place that's more neutral, where my client can get a, a fair trial. They turned him down. I would appeal right there because he was not granted a fair trial. It's not a he fair wasn't. trial when everybody in the whole damn city wants to burn you. That's not a fair trial. And you can't find an impartial jury that way. That man was railroaded because they were afraid Black Lives Matter would burn the city down. He was railroaded. Because what he did was not murder too, guys. Murder, too, means killing intent. He put his knee on the back of the dude's head, and he was wrong for that because he, where he had his knee was wrong. When cops hold you down, they're supposed to have their knee on the small of your back right here. That way it can't cut off your breathing. It can't hurt you. They're not supposed to be up by your shoulders or your neck at all. So he was wrong for that, and I think he should have got involuntary manslaughter for that. That's what he should have been charged with, and that's what he should have been convicted for. Murder, too, was added on there because of the fucking crowd, because of Black Lives Matter. That's bullshit. And the murder three charge was added on because of Black Lives Matter. That's bullshit. You don't add charges because of a mob standing outside. That's not justice, man. That's what I was mad about. And I have- I'm not saying that he's innocent because what he did, having right. his knee on his neck, was not right. But you can't... Yeah. Let's say it was you. Let's say you robbed somebody. Right. Now, let, let, let's put it like this. Let's say you stole a candy bar from a gas station. And then you go to court for a simple candy bar. And then a bunch of people say, well, if you don't charge him with aggravated robbery, we're going to burn the whole town. Next thing you know, your simple petty theft has been transformed into a fucking robbery charge because they're so afraid of what the crazies outside are going to do. That's what happened Mm -hmm. to Derek show. His charges went from involuntary manslaughter to murder too. Because they were afraid of Black Lives Matter. And I'm going to stick by that. 
because I saw the shit. And I watched the trial. They did not have enough evidence to prove murder, too, guys. I watched the whole trial and, on MSNBC every day of it. They had enough evidence for involuntary manslaughter. They did not have enough for murder, too. The man was wrongly convicted. He was. And you know what was crazy? What's going to happen? Because it's happening slowly already. You're going to not only are you having a lot of cops like resign. These are the good cops that you want to keep, you know, on the force. They're leaving because they feel like, OK, how, how, how long until I do something and somebody is there with a cell phone recording me? And that's your wait, life. Wait, that's wait a you second. Going wait, 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 wait a second. Yeah. Hold up a minute. Hold up a minute. <laughs> Fuck you mean that's a bad example. That's what I do like about this. I can put your shit up on the screen and really roast it. What do you mean it's a bad example? They elevated his charges because they were afraid of people standing outside. The analogy that I gave was the same thing. Elevating the charges out of fear. So tell me how it was a bad example. Uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe the way I don't know Minnesota law works is different. I don't know. Well, when it comes to murder charges, second degree and first degree, there has to be killing intent. Has to be. You have to prove that they intended to kill him. And if you watch the video, the whole video, Derek Chauvin did not intend to kill him. He was trying to restrain him. He never tried to kill him. That is what you need to get a murder to conviction. He, yeah, he you went need to prove killing intent. And he didn't try to kill him. He was trying to restrain him. Crazy. Most of the people that... Oh, wait wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't compare stealing a candy bar. To... It was an analogy, that fuck they don't brain. Even... You just know, bro. It was an analogy, fuck brain. Here we got one of these smart guys in the joint. Uh, uh I think Raiden froze. Hang on. I'll take him out till he can unfreeze. Yeah. And then there were two. <laughs> Isn't it? Listen, listen. You can't, I can't believe that because you don't like the analogy, you say it was bad. And not because it was inaccurate, but because I'm comparing a death to a candy bar. Never mind the fact that it fits accurately with what we're talking about. Yeah, I don't, don't. Don't pay attention to the subject. Just pay attention to like actual context. Of, like, the dude, Look, it's unfair. Do do it doesn't. It doesn't matter if it was a candy bar or was a cat. It's okay. Unfair let, let's do it like this then. Let's do it like this. Let's say you get into a fight and you punch the person, and they slip and fall and hit their head and die. Right. Your intent was to punch them. It wasn't to kill them. You go to court. And they charge you with involuntary manslaughter because even though you intended to just hit them, the result was a death. So you still got to pay for it, regardless. And then let's and you say, you know what? That's right. You know, even though I didn't mean to kill him, I did. And then you look outside, and it's a shit ton of people saying, "We want him charged with murder, or we're gonna burn the city down." Does that seem like you're gonna get a fair trial? <laughs> Even though you had no killing intent whatsoever, they want to charge you with something that requires killing intent. Murder two yeah, is you in want... the statute. It literally says you have to prove that there was killing intent. Derek Chauvin was simply leaning on a dude to try to stop him from being crazy. If you saw the whole video, George yeah. Floyd was high out of his fucking mind. Right. A big Whoa. six foot five and black dude wrestling with a bunch of little small white dudes, high on fentanyl and methamphetamine. What were they supposed to do? Take his handcuffs off and let him run down the street naked and crazy? Yeah, honestly. And when you watch the, when you watch the video from beginning to end, you can clearly see. Okay, he went up to the car with the gun pointed out. George Floyd's like, oh, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. Derek Chauvin's like, I'm not shooting you. And then even his friend, okay, even his friends said, just get in the car, you're not going to win. And yep. one of them said, hey, he's still not getting in the car. So it's like they've been here before with him not being compliant. 
And, you know, of course, the knee on the net was bad, but I feel like people didn't watch the full video from beginning to end. To, to not, know. not only did we do that, I yeah. did a full live stream where we, it was like a four hour mm. stream almost, where we watched from the very beginning when the cops walked in to the, to the store mm. and the store owner who called the police gave the cops the fake $20 bill that George Floyd used in their store. That's what started the whole altercation. Mm-hmm. We watched it from there yeah. and all the way through. We did the same thing with Rashard Brooks, the guy down in Atlanta. Remember mm-hmm. when they burned down the Wendy's? And then We watched that one mm-hmm. from beginning to end. Them cops were so That's professional, true. so fucking nice, and then at the end of it, he snatched one of their fucking guns, one of their fucking uh, tasers, shoots one of the cops with his own taser, and take off running, and then they shot him. In the state of Georgia, by the way, a taser is considered a deadly weapon. So if you point a taser at a cop, they can use their fucking service weapon against you. Don't believe me? You go look up Georgia statute right now. That's why they shot Rashard Brooks, because in the state of Georgia, a taser is considered a deadly weapon. Yeah, it's like all these people who are, what is it, defending, what, what, what's what's the, the chick who stabbed, tried to stab the chick? Mikay, Michaela Bryant. Michaela okay, Bryant. Okay. They're saying like, oh, the cop didn't need to shoot. It's like the cop is trying to save a life. You yep. could say, well, what yeah. if he used and, you know, the taser? Well, the taser, well, you know, I, always I, work. I make this thing. the taser doesn't work. Uh, case in point. Remember the black chick with the fat white cop? He yep. tased her. Mm-hmm. I did a live he stream on that. He <laughs> shot she just and guess what? Yeah. He also he shot her and she was able to shoot him and also drive away after getting yep. tased and shot. Yep. So honestly, mm-hmm. he Look, did I've seen, I've seen people you know what? I've seen people walk through bullets. Motherfuckers get hit multiple times and still not go down. When he tased that and chick you know yep. and she still got in her car and managed to shoot him. That proved right there that tasers ain't shit. And you know right. what kills Some people me though is when it. they say, "Yeah, go and ahead, Ray, go ahead." When they say, "When they say, oh, uh, why didn't they just shoot him or her in the leg?" But what I try to tell everybody is that when a cop goes for their gun, most of the time they're not shooting to wound; they're shooting to kill. You shoot and until the threat is gone or it's done. And I, I'm like, okay, let's say the role was reversed. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and finish and I'll say it. My bad. Oh, yeah. And most people, because they've never been in a situation where it's I'm like that cop probably has a family to go home to. So I'm like, when you're when you're it's like when you're in a fight, right? And let's say you're fucking Goku or whatever, and you say I'm gonna use jujitsu and all that shit. When your adrenaline's pumping and your blood pressure's high and it's fight or die, or you know, uh fight or flee or fight ah, fight or fight flight. or flee, my bad. Fight or flight, yeah. You're not going to be thinking about all that. You're just thinking to save your own ass. And if somebody has a knife and you have a gun, or that person has a gun and you have a gun, you're not going to be thinking to shoot for the leg or shoot for the, you know. Well, you know. I want you to, I want you to ask yourself: If you're a cop mm-hmm. and you get called to a violent scene like what he got called to, when he pulled up and got out of his car, there was a dude kicking a lady in the head right next to him, and another person mm-hmm. trying to stab somebody on his other side. Now, if you're a cop and you jump out of your squad car into that, you telling me you can pull your shit out, perfectly aim it, and hit a girl I was in just the leg? About to say that. Yeah. And without he's not John Wick, you know. Like, yeah, you, I, you, 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 you're doing some of that. Uh, what's that? What's that movie where they were curving the bullets? A uh, wanted. Yeah, you uh, can jump out and do some wanted shit, curve the bullet around, and hit yeah, the girl yeah, in like, the head. Like, no cop can jump out of a squad car. Get a perfect fucking aim and hit a girl in the leg while she has a knife like I'd this say, about to stab like, somebody. I'd say to give him the benefit of the doubt that the cop had anywhere between five to eight seconds to react before um, Micaiah Bryant was going to stab that chick. So you tell me, well, if, it, it, if, listen, if you're holding seconds, a knife like this, and if if you look up, if you got, if you're holding a knife like, if you're holding somebody down, and you got a knife and you're about to stab them, and you look over your shoulder and a cop is saying, "Put the knife down." Mm-hmm. It's time to make a choice. You got two choices. Put the knife down and let yourself be handcuffed. <laughs> or try to put the knife down the other way. Stupid games, stupid prizes. Like, honestly, when I look at the video, again, I don't have full context. But it's like, it's just so, like, it was so fast. It, was so it, fast. Felt, yes. it felt, it almost felt like stage. Like, everyone and, was just standing, minding their own business. And, cop, cop comes up. 
Hey, what's going on? Bitch, pulls him down. Wait, what the fuck? Dude tries to stab. I'm like, what the fuck? And no one has answered this you? question yet. We're gonna talk about it tomorrow when I get uh when I get back on Charlemagne the God and the Breakfast Club. But nobody stopped to ask this. Why were all those adults standing around watching those kids fight? Those two girls were teenagers. And you had grown yeah, adults the standing there watching it and didn't do anything to stop it. But then when the police get there, you want to blame the white police officer, but you don't want to blame the black adults who stood there and watched them fight. See, that's how, what I'm talking how about. Did she, how no, did she get the knife in the first place? There's no accountability in the black community. You had all the yeah. time in the world to stop that fight before the police got there. You chose not to. Like, and it's like what I want to know is, again, how did she get the knife in the first place? No one tried to stop her, grab it from her? Mm-hmm. Like, they wanted to kill that chick. Yep. I think the adults wanted that one chick in the pink to die. And they're just like, oh, yeah. my baby died. How could you shoot my baby? I'm like, she was going to You know kill what I find me. hilarious? Remember what I told you guys? How uh, black females are, are terminators? You notice when that chick's talking about, how can they shoot my baby? You didn't see a single tear. You ever notice on all these videos when somebody dies, the black men are crying, but the black women aren't. That's because black women are more hardcore, have more testosterone than black men these days. That's why black women, that's why black women run the community. That's why that's why they took over. The black, the black community is the only community where the women run it. I listen, you go to any white neighborhood right now, and I guarantee you every house has a mom and a dad. And the ones that don't, they keep it quiet. But All in right. the black community, you if you got 10 houses, eight of them are missing a dad. Guaranteed at and least eight why, of them. And that's why the black community is so fucked right now. And I don't mm-hmm. think people realize this, where when you have a, a, a family structure, a mom and a dad in the household, that child is more likely able to turn out better because you have both uh, parent influence, I guess you could say. Yep. Then just having a single parent, be it dad or mom, but when you have a household with the mom and the dad built in there, your chances of success is a lot better, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, you need- that's why I'm glad that I'm here with my kids because I, I know for a fact it makes a difference. I know it does. Um, when, when they were with their mom and I wasn't involved, my kids were living horrible. And then when I went and got custody of them, completely reversed that shit. Changed everything. Yeah, it's like like with um with a black kids like you wonder it's like why are all these black dudes gay? Like you know the one thing is that all these black dudes are gay. It's like well it's because they don't have the dad. And the thing is, and it's not just black; it's just women in general. Women like they don't care about like if their their son turns out to be gay because women, you know, we they're not like men where they 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 can hang out with gay dudes. So it's like if their son comes to them and be like, oh, I think I'm gay, even though first off, if you're if you're younger than at least 16, you tell me you're gay. There's no way because you shouldn't yeah. even be liking girls. So I don't even I'll listen fuck. to I don't listen to like these young people that are like transitioning. And I don't listen to them because you got people like nine years old trying to get trans surgery. First of all, it's you're still nine. so stupid. It's you're like still playing with fucking blocks Lego and blocks like and shit. You don't even know anything about anything. So you definitely don't know about anything about sexuality. Like, um, yeah, this, I, I watched this video where this guy, uh, it was one of them talk shows. I can't remember. I think it was Dr. Phil, but it might not have been. This guy hadn't seen his son in like 20 years because his son uh, said he was gay. And then he went from being gay to transitioning into a woman. Um, this. So I guess the talk show got them together or something. Guy comes out on stage. They talk to him, this and this. And he was like, well. They announced his son, but they said, here's your daughter. This man, and I felt, man, I, I almost fucking cried. This dude's son comes out, out, walking out with all the lady parts and shit. It was an old white dude. This man broke down and started crying. He was so fucking hurt. Because there ain't a man on this planet that want to see their son no. coming out with fake boobs and fucking mini skirts and shit on and high heels. I watched that video and I almost fucking cried. That man was fucking hurt bad. Honestly, like, that shit hurt him. Feel, that's, like, like that's like the ultimate sense of like I failed as a dad. Yes. Like, I'm a, mm-hmm. I failed. Yes, that man. It was bad. Like I, I couldn't even finish watching the video. It was so bad. I said that that you could see 
how hurt that man was. He felt like he just right. fucked up. As a father, I and, bet he just felt horrible. Yeah, I, I don't like want that. Them, I don't want that. And like a lot of a lot of them now, they're actually putting their kids. I forget it's either beta blockers or hormone blockers or something like that, where they where they don't continue with puberty. That way they can have time to decide on what they want to be. But I'm like, if you're the parent and the kid's a kid, they don't tell you what they want to be. That's why they're called kids, you know? And, and to, right. it's just, it makes me personally not even want to bring a child into the world because now if we tell a child, hey, you're not a girl, you're a boy. Hey, you're not a boy, you're a girl. Then the parent, the child can go tell somebody. Did you, you see the laws kids? that they're trying to pass where doctors can't even tell uh, the parent if the kid is a girl or a boy? They're trying to pass that. these. That. They're yeah, trying to pass that. these gender laws where, when a child's born, the doctor can't put on the birth certificate what they are, and they can't tell mm -hmm. the parents. They have to just let the child be whatever. And I was like, "What the fuck is the fuck?" Point like, so what are you supposed to say? This is human with penis. Like, <laughs> no, you can't mention gender or sexual organs or nothing. You can't do nothing. You just give people their kid. That's it. You can't put it on the birth that certificate or nothing. That yeah. that doesn't help anything. It's just, it I, just I, I I think they're called um I forgot the I think the thing that like non gender specific laws or something where they basically just trying to get rid of male and female gender. They're just trying to get rid of it completely. And I don't understand why people want to try to get rid of genders. You can't. We're they're always going to be here as long as there are men and women. There's always going to be genders, but they're trying to eliminate them completely now. I mean, they, it's bad enough. We're letting you do all your trans stuff, your gay stuff, your lesbian stuff. We're just staying out of your way. But now yeah. you don't even want us to be allowed to call ourselves male or female. This is where this is where people getting their rights goes too far. Remember when I say right. how feminists feminists don't just want rights; they want to be able to control men too. Well, yeah. the, the LGBT community, they don't just want the rights to do what they want to do. They want the right to force us to fucking do it with them. They want to force us to conform to that bullshit. That's yeah, why I ain't, like whenever they tell you to use their pronouns, I ain't using your mm -hmm. fucking pronouns. I'm going to say what I want to say. I'm an American citizen. You don't get to decide mm -hmm. what words I can use. Use my, these are my preferred pronouns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like it's like the people who say like there's over a hundred genders. The dude who was you know making that claim didn't even know ninety percent of those genders. Yeah, dude he made the shit up. <laughs> I remember that like, shit. He made the shit up. He couldn't name them. Yeah, like they call you. Oh, if you oh you're 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 not straight. You're cisgender. What the fuck is straight cisgender? Dude, well, you're listen, basically I, straight. You know how they got preferred pronouns? I have preferred verbs. Like go <laughs> fuck yourself. That's my preferred verb. See, so, yeah, we can yeah, play this game already, too. Like it's they've just... already, they've already, and, and it's enough that as as a society we have to accept these things. But they've already ruined the traditional family. Like the traditional family is pretty much ruined. Now, um, well, I'm gonna say like, I'm gonna say this: the idea of it is ruined. But I have a traditional family. Woman, kids, we're taking care of business. You can have it if you want it. People got to want it and people got to people got to be unafraid to stand up for it. I stand up for it because I have it. I know how I know how beneficial it is. OK, mm -hmm. when I live by myself, even though I like the solitude, I reached a certain point where I didn't like being by myself all the time. When you're young and you want to play and bullshit around and you got an apartment by yourself, you love it. But as you get older, you like having family. You like having people around, even if you don't talk to them every day. And it just it's just a part of life. Um, yeah. But if you want a family, you can have it. Just don't worry about it. Like you got the red pills telling you, fuck all women, fuck everything, jack your dick every night in Pornhub. And then you got the crazy bitches on the other side trying to get you to raise another man's kids. All you got to do is this. Find a chick that's on your level that you like, that likes you in return, and y'all got a lot of shit in common. And y'all want to get together and tell everybody on the outside, fuck all of y'all, and don't worry about it. Because guess what? You can red. find you can find you a good woman if you actually get off the dating apps and go look. Dating apps is what's killing dating because you can't learn yeah. shit from a dating app. But if you take a girl yeah. out to dinner, you can learn a bunch. That's I mean, why I try when like when you date, 
it's like you you need to make your your points early. Like you need to say like, look, I don't fuck with gay shit. That's just how it is. Like I don't fuck with that gay shit. So yep. you got like gay friends. You know you can hang out with them, but don't bring them over to my place. Don't do that shit. You know if we have I mean, kids, they are gonna be straight. Just my, let it know. My woman, she has gay friends, and I could care less. I could care exactly. less. That, that ain't my them her friends. That's the way I look at it. Her friends are her friends. I don't bother them people. They don't bother me. It's just that simple. That's how you handle that. If you got a woman and she got gay friends, fuck it. Yeah, I don't I don't care. It's just like personally with me, I just like just don't bring it like around me. Like you can go over there and hang out with them, but just me personally, I just I'm not a fan of that. Well, you know, you know that you get called homophobic for that. Like not wanting to hang around gay people is considered hom- homophobic. Even though you haven't said anything to them, even though you haven't bothered them, even though you haven't criticized them, um, just the fact that you don't want anything to do with it is homophobic, according to the snowflakes. Like my my policy is a very simple one. You got a right to do whatever you want. You're American and you pay taxes. So if you're a guy, you want to fuck guys, go for it. Don't well, try to come on to me and don't mess with my kids. That's my well, rule. I'm saying well, it's, like it's just term. like it's just like when you say I don't want to hang around niggas. People just assume, oh, you racist. You don't want to hang around black people. I ain't say black people. I said, I niggas. said niggas. Well, what's the difference? There's a clear difference. You, we all know the difference. You just choose not to admit it. Yep. We all, like let's be real. Hey, Everybody what, knows. Wait a minute. Hold on. Is. Hold on a minute. What did you say, right? Oh no, I was just saying. I was just. I, he he had made a good point, and NBA made a good point. I I never liked that word homophobic because phobic at the end basically makes it sound as if you're afraid. Well, that okay. I was going to say the word has been misused. Like the mm. homophobic or transphobic or what? It's actually a misuse of the word because phobia right. means fear. And we're not afraid of these people. We just simply don't want anything to do with them. There's a big difference. It's like, is there a word for like homosexual indifference? Because that's what I am. Oh, <laughs> uh, I got a word for you. I have stay away from stay away phobia. Like, look, <laughs> go I, fuck listen, yourself phobia. <laughs> listen, I go out in public. I see gay people out handling mm-hmm. their business, doing their thing. It don't offend me. It don't bother me. It, they got a right to live just like the rest of us. I only ask two things. Don't walk up to me hitting on me. Don't try to teach the shit to my children. Like if they start trying to treat teach transgender studies, then I'm pulling my kids oh, out of that class. No, I have to scrap with the teacher with that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling my kids that. out of that class. I don't want them learning that shit. It's my job to teach my kids the birds and the bees, not some dumbass snowflake teacher. Yeah, that's what I because I you know I'm I was born in like two thousand, so you know I'm you know millennial yeah uh, fifth grade is when they started kind of like doing that and actually i was like one of the last kid generations to have sexual ed education yeah, they, my, they got rid of school. sex ed yeah like because I, I, I remember being in high school talking like i'm like a sophomore or junior talking to freshmen i'm like oh yeah remember uh this is, it was this video called just around the corner talking about sexual education they were like yeah. we, don't, we don't have that i'm like yeah, they got rid of they got rid of driver's ed, they got rid of home economics, and they got rid of sex ed. Yeah, I think know, they, they should have actually... kept all three of those, really, but they should have changed them. Instead of getting rid of them, they should have modernized them and made them better. But they just scrapped mm-hmm. them. Like home ec, for instance. Women don't know how to cook nowadays. Home ec taught yeah. women how to cook. Now you can't find a chick under 40 who can cook. Hell, you can't find some over 40 nowadays that can fucking cook. Yeah, but women can't like, cook now. Because now you know, the, what we have is culinary arts, but that's that's an elective. Yeah. You have to choose. You have to choose. It's not like mandatory. Exactly. You have to choose exactly. to do it. Oh, man, and most, mandatory. most people don't do it. Yeah, driver's ed. Like, motherfuckers can't drive nowadays. I've seen some of the worst drivers ever now <laughs> compared to back when I was growing up. And they need driving courses. They need it bad. <laughs> but they don't teach it anymore. Like people now, your your cousin or your uncle or your brother or your dad take you out, put you behind the wheel, and you drive down the street and try not to hit somebody. All right, you learn how to drive. Let's go get your license. That's how that's how we do it now. They used to teach your ass in class what the signs meant, what the lines on the road meant. Like people don't know that stuff anymore. Like I had a guy pass me the other day in a no passing zone. He, I get, I'm pretty sure he had no idea that it was a no passing zone. He didn't give a fuck. Just went around me anyway. Like, like 
And if he would have got hit by an oncoming truck, he probably would have blamed me for it if he lived. But see, me, I'm an evil bastard. So if you get hit by a semi, <laughs> I'm going to get out of my shit, stop, and then reach in your window, gra grab your wallet, see if you're carrying any cash, throw your wallet back in there, let it burn with you, and get on down the it's road. Like, it's like the dumb people who don't know they can turn on a red light, turn right on a red, on a oh, red light. Oh, man, don't get me started on that. I'm like, you can turn. It's a red. It's, it's a right-hand turn. You can turn. It doesn't matter if it's red. You can I turn. laid on the horn one day. This old lady was in front of me. With her blinker on, sitting at a goddamn stop sign, <laughs> and I and I, there was no cars coming, and I was like, "This ain't even a light; it's a sign." You could have turned a long fucking time ago. She's just sitting there, and I laid on my fucking horn, just lay. I yeah! and then finally she fucking turned. I turned with her, and I got on the side of her, rolled down my window. I said, "You stupid fucking <laughs> bitch." Man, I was going <laughs> off. I was so fucking mad. Sorry. But people that don't that don't know they can turn red, they can turn right on red. I'll be yeah. I'll, days like that. I wish I had one of those big ass grills on the front of my truck where I could just push their ass out into traffic. I can't. No, you, see the, you see the you see the the wheels that got like the spikes. On yeah, the, <laughs> the road warrior. <laughs> yeah. Mad Max. Max. <laughs> got saw blades on the front of his grill and shit. For real. I, I, one day, I, I swear to God, man, I swear I wish that it was like GTA. I was just like, I want I wanted to just roll down my window and just unload on this car. I was so <laughs> mad. People can't drive. Like, my woman had to make me roll. Like, one day, I was so fucking mad. I rolled the window down. I was finna go the fuck off. She said, roll that window up. Don't do it. Because, man, I there was one time where I literally... Put my truck in park, hit the door, open it. I took out my belt and get out and walk up to the car in front of me. Cause this motherfucker, he was driving so slow. I wanted to kill this dude. <laughs> I swear, man. His mother, I mean, he had to be doing like 15 miles per hour. And the road was like a 45. I wanted to kill this dog. I was like, why are you driving so slow? Man, you have these motherfuckers on the freeway. They in the fast lane. They driving like forty five miles per hour. I've seen people get pulled over for that. Like, it's <laughs> like there's a med there's a minimum of uh, in some areas here where the minimum is forty. So if you're doing like right. thirty, they gonna pull you over. I've actually right. seen people get pulled over for that shit. Like, why are you driving that damn slow in a seventy mile per hour lane? That don't like, make sense. It'd be like it'd be making me having like it's like I know it's illegal. I I just want to go in the carpool lane. Fuck it. I know I don't have a passenger with me, but I, I got to go. In the oh, they pull, they, they, they pull you over big time for that shit here. I know. In the carpool lane. Yeah. Yeah. I, a lot I know of people doing, be doing that. I be thinking it. I'm just like, shit. Just just, just to get past this nigga. Maybe oh, I've seen a video it. where a guy had put like a mannequin in his passenger seat and dressed it all <laughs> up and shit. And he used it every day to go back and forth to work. And finally, the police caught on to it. But they was like. <laughs> How the fuck this dude got the same motherfucker in his car every day? <laughs> like, that's a carpool lane. You telling me that's the only person you carpool with? And then right. finally, they, they finally uh, pulled him over and found out he was using a mannequin. I mean, I got to get a dude props. That's genius shit. Yeah. Shit, I probably use that a couple times to get to work. Just like, fuck it. I need the mannequin. <laughs> exactly. Like, who gives a shit? Well, Man. we've been on here for a pretty good while, fellas, so I, I, I will count this first stream as a success. I think we did excellent. You guys that came on, I appreciate it. All you niggas has been in the league for like two years. Y'all should all be shaming yourself. The new guys came out and represented. The new guy, except for Frozen. He he came out and represented. You, you, you old guys has been here for a while. Y'all should be shaming yourselves. Y'all got beat by some upstarts. Uh, no, it was St. Cloud. Yeah, St. Cloud don't count. He didn't really say shit. <laughs> he my boy, but he come on and be like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm coming down off my howl dog. <laughs> oh, he actually holds the record for falling asleep on the stream one time. That nigga fell asleep yeah, live on the air. Had to mute his fucking mic and everything. But yeah, uh, this was a fucking good stream, guys. Uh, I guess we'll. Uh, I'll try to do another one Saturday. I got to leave Sunday, so we'll try to set up another one yeah. uh, so, uh, Saturday, and we'll have a, a more serious topic. We'll get into more of this serious YouTube shit that's been going on. We might even talk about some of this Kevin Samuels noise because people want to hear about it for some dumb reason. I don't give a shit if he's gay or not, but other people want to talk about it. 
So I guess we'll jump on to that shit. I appreciate right. y'all coming out, and um, I appreciate okay. you two gentlemen for jumping on. I'll catch up with y'all in the Discord. All right, man. All right, All right peoples. I'm sure I'll get some rave reviews. Then again, who gives a shit whether I get them or not? This was supposed to be a test run. It turned out to be a whole fucking stream, which is fine. I don't really care. Oh, I see our local trolls managed to show up. Hmm. Oh, well. I didn't even notice them because my mods are so good. Oh, man. But anyways, like I said, we're going to come up with some more serious stuff to talk about. We're going we're gonna to touch on a lot of this YouTube crap that's been going on. I know that's all drama and stupid, but I know you guys like it. So who gives a shit? We're just here to have fun. Um, but leave me some comments. If y'all got any ideas or stuff y'all want to talk about, throw it in the comment section. Um, critiques, complaints, whatever. It was the first time, so it was kind of rough at the beginning, but it smoothed itself out. Anywho's, I'm going to get the hell off of here. Uh, I want to enjoy the rest of my night before I go to sleep. And uh, I will see y'all tomorrow when we do the uh, Charlemagne, the God stream. And then uh, I got to do the stream about Atlanta, too. So I got a lot of live streaming coming up, basically. But I'll get back with y'all.